The shows are back. The shows are back. The shows are back. <laughs> hey, y'all. So listen, this week's show is presented to you by highly anticipated, critically acclaimed mm-hmm. comedy that some of you may know as Dear White People. It's back today, August 2nd, only on Netflix. This season, the characters will follow their hearts and passions, shed layers of identity, and take on the issues that plague them in radical new ways. So listen, you know what to do. Catch up. We're talking about the shows. Yes. We're talking about all of the right amount of drama, and we're talking about so many fine, fine, <laughs> indiv- I mean, <laughs> gorgeous That's black people. Facts. So check out Volume 2, Dear White People, now on Netflix. Let's move on. Hey, y'all. This week's episode is also brought to you by Children of Blood and Bone, the number one New York Times bestseller by Tomi Adeyemi. Entertainment Weekly calls it a phenomenon, and USA Today says it's impossible to put down. This sweeping fantasy brings both Black Lives Matter and Black Girl Magic into a fictional West African world inspired by Tomi's Nigerian roots. I have heard such great things about this book. I have it now. Cannot wait to finish it. You can go read Children of Blood and Bone today. It is available wherever you get your books. Now let's start the show. Lean in real close. I want to tell you something. Okay. I just have something. I'm going to regret this. I already know. To share with you. I want to. Um, you finna holler and I know it. I want to tell you what I did last night. <laughs> I came home, say, around a quarter, quarter to three. three. Still so high. High. Hypnotized. Dinner trance from his body. So bottom and around. And visualizing you would have thought I needed help. The feeling that I felt so shook. I had to catch my breath. There goes my shirt up over my head. Come on, titties. Oh, my. <laughs> Listen. Every time I hear this song, and song, probably for the rest of my life, like ever, yeah, I will always remember the time where I don't remember where we were going or coming from, but I was in uh, the car with my mama, and that song came on the radio, Uh-oh. and she changed it, and she, <laughs> said, and she said to me, "I really loved that song," and then I was singing it one day, and I realized what it's about. Oh wow. <laughs> And I didn't know what she was referencing, but I re- I figured it wasn't some Christian. Right. And so well, she was you know. like, huh? <laughs> hmm. Oh. So she was just like really feeling Tweet's voice or whatever. She liked the sound of the song. Yeah, she and liked didn't really, the beat. She loved Tweet's She wasn't voice. focused on the lyrics like that. And she wasn't focused on the lyrics as much as just that it was a vibe. Yeah. And then one I day mean, it, was it came and hit her. <laughs> she was and like... <laughs> At least not in the car with the kids. Yeah. No, in fact, I think she flat out told me that it was about masturbation. Oh, wow. Yeah, she did. Wow. Yeah, she did. She told me that I liked the song until I realized it was about masturbation. Because uh, Yes, because she's flat out how I realized what the song was about, wow. too. Because I think I just thought it was about sex. Yeah. I mean, I think I probably would have assumed the same thing. I don't have any experiences like this because we were not allowed to listen to secular music in the car. So we literally never listened to nothing but my mom's gospel tapes. <laughs> and that was it. And here we are still cussing. <laughs> or my daddy's oldies. It was one or the other, bitch. Nothing else. Still a classic. Uh, Absolutely. Tweet, Absolutely. Classic vocalist. Mm-hmm. Um, iconic. Yes, In she fact. Is. Mm-hmm. Sings, harmonizes the things. Eternal beauty. A ridiculous voice, man. Um, make no sense. Missy Elliott. Yep. Solange as well. Featured on the song as well as, you know. She's just out here. Riding. You know, respected and, and still working. <sighs> I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you bitches. <laughs> they already know, honestly. They just, if they don't pick Missy, if you're talking about the VMAs, if they don't give it to Missy, that video Vanguard, then they are just fucking with our emotions. Like at that point, I'm yeah. going to feel like yeah, it's a intentionally mm-hmm. attacked. Yep. Um, antagonized and it's just going to be a problem yep. so let's do the things that we need to do music television <laughs> as if we're not talking about music uh-huh. and a musician I'm not even going to get into this because we already know You're not even just give it to, to Missy so we don't have to fucking riot it ain't no excuse this year guys this week uh, we're back and I am tweet and I'm so blessed <laughs> 
me. Wow. I totally forgot that we had not done that part already. <laughs> Woo. I am Robin Thede. For another trip. <laughs> Bring to you. You are such a fucking fool. This is the read, guys. Mm-hmm. And we're coming out on Friday like we told you we would. Shout out to Robin Thede. Yes. She's got a big project coming out tonight on HBO, Black Lady Sketch Show. A big project, you, you know, say? You know, you know how sometimes you might be somewhere and people don't really value you, understand you, respect your work or whatever, oh. so they let you go and then something way better comes along and scoops oh. you up. Shout out to Robin Thede and the whole cast and crew, everybody involved uh, with a Black Lady Sketch Show. I cannot wait for y'all to see this Literally show. so good. I cannot wait. It's so good. So Black Excellence this week, um, 11-year-old Jaden Jefferson is a journalistic icon. Oh, I saw this. Did you? I did. Yes. So this young black boy <laughs> is out here interviewing a political candidate. He is. A presidential at 11. Candidate. Yes, he is. And um, yes, potential. Thank you for correcting my ignorance. No worries. And... Um, not only is he one of the youngest, if not, yeah, like the youngest reporter out here in this pool mm-hmm. of reporters <laughs> in where this uh, Toledo, Ohio, where he's from. He's asking questions. Like, I don't right. know. Like, not playing with y'all. This young man is like getting straight to it. He's about his business. He's not playing around yes. with any of you other girls. He's asking the questions. He's keeping it concise. Come on. And he's asking what needs to be asked. He's good at what he does, okay? I can think of some people CNN could fire and hire this young man instead. <laughs> I mean, a couple of y'all. No shade. Do you want to name names? I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. But they know who they are. Yeah, this is positive. You know, it's for now it is <laughs> there's a positive section of the show yes nothing else is and so um, he got to interview Elizabeth Warren twice once was in the press pool and then he got to do a one on one and like an exclusive interview yep. with her um, for four minutes after all the things um, about 45 they talk about uh, <laughs> ways to provide equal opportunities for people of color how she stands out from other candidates and the so on. I love reading that when a Fox News reporter asked um, for his opinion on Marianne Williamson, he said, Lord, a mess. I can't come on. I can't comment on that because that's just one of my journalistic responsibilities. What? Yes. Come through. <laughs> Elizabeth. You're not Warren getting like, fuckery over He's there. a better, he's a better <laughs> reporter than some of these grown folks I've seen. Like, so, not even trying to lie right now. You're getting right Right down he's, to the, the facts. And he has reports. standards, okay? Okay. JMC 1001. I don't reveal things ahead of their time. I mean, time. honestly, I should study it. <laughs> I should do such a better, like... Listen, this is not a journalistic effort, okay? Responsibility. The read, we don't do that. I don't know This is not... We don't fact check. We don't... Jayden. That's not our... We don't do that shit. <laughs> that's that young man's job. And he does a great job at it. Go off, little Jaden. So, he has an Instagram page here. Instagram Jaden underscore reports. Of course. So you can go and and catch up with this young man and all of his uh, highlights, updates, <laughs> and so on. Because I stand. Personally. Listen and got all his uh, credits and stuff in his uh, in his bio. Okay, thirteen ABC, Fox thirty six, bitch, CNN, and MSNBC. Bitch. He's in the know. Where are you? <laughs> Wait, and he posts news. Vehicle fire on I-75 near the Erie Road exit. Traffic is backed up for miles. <laughs> I live. Yes! Wow. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. So. How beautiful. Shout out to Jaden. I can't. That's so funny. <laughs> He's literally reporting on his Instagram. Like... As well as Facebook. He's got a Twitter. You can just go and find him. Wow. Okay. Whew. All right. So let's keep the ball rolling with our hot topic section. It is called Hot Tops. Um, honey, I drank the kids. <laughs> you are filthy. I'm proud of that one. I was not ready for I'm that at all, bitch. That one came to me and I was like, oh, sure. Yes. Totally. What, what took Okay. <laughs> Woo. So, right. more black excellence. That's the tone for today. <laughs> First of all, Woo. 
hepatitis. Ooh, wee. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Hashtag I stand with Titus. Hashtag protect Titus at all costs. And, and that's it. That's uh, really it. He did what needed to be done. And it just, it was done so oh, beautifully. It was. So, our friend Titus Bird just appeared on Watch What Happens Live. Mm hmm. And, um, a little moment with Andrea going. <laughs> Host of the show and things over there at Bravo. And so he got a question uh, from a caller, texter, however that shit worked. Yeah, and a producer. <laughs> you know, the producers be writing that shit. And so. <laughs> or was it an audio question? Like, no, no, no. Okay. Because it was on a card. Let's see. They asked him about um, working with Eddie Murphy in this upcoming movie that they have been. Like, from, like I've already seen screenshots and talks of it at festivals and stuff like okay. that. So it's, like, a known thing. Um, and he asks him, like, after doing this whole, oh, my God, you did a movie with Eddie Murphy? Da, 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 thing. He slides in this question what? about whether or not Ty just got to, um, to speak to Eddie Murphy because he was once problematic for Gays. Oh Lord. And um Titus basically just shut that shit down. Now here I just want to go through the layers of yeah. why yeah, let's do that. I live for this. Now, if anybody, you know, takes a trip on over to Bravo every now and then and is familiar enough with at least the housewives reunions. Yeah. If couple, nothing else. If, you know, you could have caught a couple of uh, moments on Watch What Happens Live. But the reunions, I feel like, say everything that needs to be said. Absolutely. Anyway, Andy has a way of asking messy questions, being messy, and then, you know, doing the white gay dance back yes. away from yep. it afterwards. <laughs> Um, so this just felt incredibly loaded, obviously, but past that, what really irked me, and I feel like it probably was irking Titus as well, was just this fact that, like, the setup to it, you know, or leading to it, which was like, first of all, why are we acting, like, surprised that this man could be in a movie with Eddie Murphy? Yeah, like, yeah, that's cool. That's a good point. Or whatever. Yeah. But, the, oh, really? Wow! Congratulations. Like, what are you talking about? This man's been nominated for Emmys before. He's been in several seasons of an incredibly popular show on Netflix. He's been on Broadway. Like, oh, you're talking about, you're not talking about some, like... Right. This ain't, it ain't me. It's you not... Know, it's somebody who just popped right, up you know out of no damn way. We're not talking about Sheree. This is like, <laughs> okay. No, wait a minute. But, no, but for real. Yeah, like, for you're real. Talking like, we're him, talking about a professional. You're talking about like, his job. Like, yes. like, it's one of these women that yes. you found at, like, <laughs> right. a cocktail party somewhere and, and gave them a job. <laughs> no, bitch. <laughs> I does this, Like, bitch. I work. Yeah. I <laughs> Talent. I have it. I, I do me. these it's things. What I do. Fool. So that felt like annoying to me. And then even before he gets into the, oh, he was problematic at one point when I was coming up comment, he says, well, did you get a chance to speak to Andy Murphy at all? And Titus, I love Titus' response to that, which was, of course I did. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> like, do you think I would be sequestered? For, like, I'm not the fucking PA. Bitch, I just told you <laughs> I'm in a movie with this nigga. Oh, Andy, Andy. What are you talking Andy, about? What the hell? So then he says, you know, because I, I, he, he was once problematic or whatever for the gays. Yeah. Titus says, "Oh, I see." <laughs> Which, like, that face another made, part yes. that was just like delicious for me personally. Oh. He says, "Well, he wasn't uh, problematic for Titus." Then he mentioned that they talked about, um, like, Dream Girls and all of that. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. Eddie Murphy definitely has, like, bits in mm -hmm. his career that are problematic. Yeah. Oh, he absolutely does. Like, many comedians. Um, but Eddie Murphy is also one of those 
one of those it's a secret but it's not really a secret like See, everybody fucking you just knows went there. I'm just saying and I, and I was going to like, I'm not, I don't have it like this I don't like it's like but fine you know when I think of Eddie Murphy I think of all of the gays or queers or people who are not ready to accept those labels who have internalized uh, homophobia and transphobia and everything else and so they just project it back into the world obviously I'm not saying for sure that he is but I'm saying that everybody knows that he is <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like, look. So, yes, Eddie Murphy has definitely had loads and loads of rumors about him dating yeah. like Johnny Gill and what, and you know the trans girls you have know. come out and been like, "Sweetie, don't don't do this." Right. So it's not even like, yes, like there's a history yes, to all of this, exactly. which I feel like learned. <laughs> so it's like, like come on you know, like, yes we educated. kind of are like I don't even know that we would have asked a question like this in 2019 no past the fact that as Laverne Cox said people evolve you're talking about like bits like some of y'all at home could catch me up if there are some other comments that I've missed yeah but the ones that I'm aware of are yeah. from like stand-ups from the 80s I was gonna like say that. like late 80s early 90s at the latest maybe I feel like I haven't heard anything problematic from Eddie Murphy since the Shrek days. Like, since Shrek. I'm serious, too. I think he cleaned it up. No, I know you're serious. Like, thoroughly bef- before he was donkey. And he has been, you know, riding that train ever since. I don't know that, man. And I don't, like, have Google alerts on these niggas. So right. I don't. It, right, I, there exactly. could be things that I've missed. I'm saying what I'm aware of is, like, old things. And as Laverne Cox mentioned before they danced right on over her. Like her comment was, people can evolve. Yeah. So you don't know. And as Titus was saying, spoke to me, sat down there, seemed to really enjoy me. So if he has problems with gay people, I wouldn't know. Right. Because I didn't see any of it. I did not see any of it. What you were trying to do is load this question up for me to say something (laughs) like, uh, degrading or disparaging about this black man right. for whatever random ass reason who's not here to support himself or say anything just because you want a highlight of your show yep. of this black guy, gay man being messy. Yep. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not giving you that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You save that shit for motherfucking Adam Lambert or one of your girls when they come through Woo! an issue, you play that say game it. with them. I'm not going to do that because quite honestly, I don't need to be here. Like I just like, it was so so present. It was yes, it really was. And that's what I love about us because we can just say what needs to be said <laughs> in and 15 be, yes. seconds or less. The old days of Instagram. That's you know when you <laughs> need to just get it out of your fucking system. Everything that and so man. And that is just that. It was so present. And then he motions to somebody off camera who I'm just assuming is someone who was a part of his team. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell what he was saying, but he made this face that it was almost like, I'm not about to do this shit with this bitch. I know that's day. right. Like, this she I don't know who she like, thinks no. <laughs> she's playing with, but I'm not gonna do it. Um and then Andy's like, well, what are you saying over there? Sorry, it is. And then he gave me my new way of life. Okay. Honestly, All right. Which is, um, keep going, girl. Do your show. <laughs> I just want to say that that is, uh, it's my mantra now. Uh, I'm so full. Keep going, girl. Do your show is a multi-purpose statement. It is. I mean, it can be said for so many different things. It can be said when somebody is, um, <clears throat> Needs to sort of be dismissed. Right. Because you feel so indifferent to their existence. Yeah. That you just kind of want to get whatever's happening over. Mm-hmm. It could be said. That's what was um, happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm talking about this. That, that is what was happening. It can also be said as uh, a line of encouragement. You know what I'm saying? Keep going, girl. Like you, you hosting these, these HBO. <laughs> Don't do that. These HBO functions. <laughs> I can say, hey, keep going, girl. Yes. Do your Do show. Your sh- it's all in the inflection, okay? It's all in the tone. It can be said when somebody is doing the absolute most <laughs> <coughs> and you just are waiting for them to pipe the fuck down. Keep going, girl. Do your <laughs> show. Do your show. Do oh, sh- see, see, I see. Do you see blackness? Do, right. This is us. This is what I'm magic, talking about. Honestly. Look so, at what we can do with so few. We make so much out of so little. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Titus, we might just have to stand forever. 
Um, and that Instagram caption um, went in as well. Well, I guess this wasn't really the caption. It was a comment that he wrote under the caption. But, you know, I just had to remind everybody I did not sign up to go beyond Housewives of Atlanta. This is a talk show. And, you know, wasn't here for the mess and the drama and shit. We here this to nigga. talk about things that are going on professionally and not to be ratchet and act a fucking fool. First of all, <laughs> he called him a messy queen. He like did. off rip on top, uh, like on the the, the very, very beginning. first line. Like line one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and said, yes, I said it. Don't care if he knows either. He should remember his talk show, Is It, in episodes of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, literally saying, mm-hmm. I'm not Miss Lee. Right. Bitch. <laughs> you got me fucked up. Um, <laughs> if only time were taken to know who I am and not assuming that I am the character I play on TV, even know how to conduct a proper interview. Um, I Ooh. received four Emmy nominations for acting, not for being myself. That's my favorite part. Here comes mine. <laughs> He was lucky I had my wits and Christian values that day. (laughs) Always keep it classy. I take it back. This is my favorite. Being friends with other talented celebrities doesn't make you talented. It makes you friends with other famous celebrities. Yikes. What he said simply was, um, here's a vial. Place your blood in it. (laughs) It is mine now. He should rip a page from Anderson Cooper and learn how to do his job. Wow. Titus said, you may run with the girls, but it doesn't make you one of us. I'm, and I really love that he slid in them four Emmy nominations as well. Like, this is, I am a professional person. You are I am confused. not one of your hoes with bundles. I do things for real money. I am real talented. I am talented. <laughs> I act. I, I does this. I, I sing. sing. <laughs> I, I don't know who you thought that you Titus, were speaking yes. to. Oh, God. This was Dolomite is my name is the film. <laughs> it's out in fall. Like, I don't even. So. I loved it. Um, I think they at, like access asked Andy Cohen about it or whatever. Is he feuding with Titus? And he's like, oh, I'm not. You know, maybe he is with me or something to that nature. And then he said. Uh, they asked him if Titus would be welcome back on the show. And he said, he's been on four times. And he goes, he can do whatever he wants. I just don't want to offend him. You know you don't. Right. I bet, I bet you, you do don't. <laughs> you thought. And you know he's you not feuding with you. Before. He got you together right then and there. Like, let you know what was what. And then told you to continue with your program. Stop, stop it. Please. What, what was that? You know good and damn well y'all are not feuding. He just got you together. And maybe it was embarrassing for you because it was on your own show. But... Oh, well. You saw this black queen, you saw this other black queen, and you said, let's, you know what I'm saying, let me just Mm -hmm. stir up some some black mess. mess. Here's this trans woman of color, here's this gay man. Yeah. (laughs) Like... It Let was, me just right. fuck it up and put them. I don't, I can't. It's plenty of people who go up to watch what happens live all of the time and will do that dance. And lots of people do the dance loving it, you know? But girl, don't be up there playing games. Right. I mean, it just don't, it, I guess from now on, you know that Titus is not the one for you. I mean, you just, you know, you know it now. You know it for sure. Wait till Portia and them come back on their show to, to play your little fucking games. <laughs> Learning is, it's it's a paramount experience. It is. Um, it matters. Further Black Excellence, Lil Nas X. Oh, yeah. 17 weeks at the top now. Um, thanks to Peppa, Team Peppa Pig. <laughs> and <laughs> What did Peppa Pig do? Oh, I'm just talking about the baby. Oh, duh. I thought you was going to say she had a, like a remix with Lil Nas X on her girl, album. Did you see that woman who posted her baby head banging in the bed? Yes. <laughs> yes. The cutest. It was adorable. I mean, they. <laughs> he had the most serious look on his face, too. Like, I am not when fucking with this you. this beat drops. Keep it. On repeat, mommy. Like, I'm not. So many parents are like, I tried to cut so it off. Know. And they throw a fucking fit. Like, it's just easier for them to put Old Town Road on re- on repeat and get home in peace than to try to listen to NPR or, you know, Megan Thee Stallion and, and your child you is do not rioting. Play it again. <laughs> Karen, Karen, I Karen. Listen am to Karen. going <laughs> to sneak into your bed. <laughs> 
at night. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to urinate. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to kick you in your face. <laughs> so what do you want to do today, Karen? So you wake up with a sore cheek and in piss. Play the song. <laughs> I said like so so many teachers too have oh, sent yeah. us messages That's like so over it. if you knew <laughs> how tired we are <laughs> like of them kids saying can't nobody tell me nothing if you don't sit your shit, black ass so down on it. <laughs> I'm telling you to sit your ass down take out a pencil calling a the parents at home Karen <laughs> you've got to do something about Elijah because damn it. I can't oh, take man. it. Everybody anymore. who works with children is very fucking tired of that song. But Lil Nas X broke the record and um, And it still goes off. Like I was fully yeah, drunk. I'm not this tired week. of it. I'm not. And it we came on enough. in a, a little uh, a club out there in Mexico. Of course it did. And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> like I don't know it just <laughs> still this. there's just something about but it. But you it's know why? Because we don't have to listen to it all the fucking time. That's we can play hard. it when we want to. <laughs> <laughs> I just be wanting to pick this nigga up from school <laughs> one day without once this nigga oh. Lil Nas X. <sighs> um, but yeah, congratulations yeah, to him. Win for Longest the days. running song at the top of the Hot 100. So good for you, young man. Cheese on your burger. And Mariah and Carey's, bacon. Um, Mariah Carey's post <laughs> was really sweet when she posted about it, and she literally uploaded a photo of herself passing the torch to Lil Nas X, and I was like, "What a fucking icon! <laughs> How can you not love Mariah Carey, man? The iconicism." It's, it's it knows no bounds. Out of it, it, it was what? literally a, a picture of her past. I saw it. Olympic torch. <laughs> I just she's so fun. She is, and I it was like a her. really gracious. And I mean, everybody knows that Mariah Carey's achievement is far more uh, yes, impressive like when you give when you take into account just the different eras. Like streaming is. Streaming is it, it totally difference. changed the fucking game. It's Absolutely. a different game. So, but it was very gracious of her, and I think it helped calm the the um what's Mariah's how called the lamb the lamb I think it helped the relax lamely. the lamely a little bit because you know they were deep and they feel were they oh they are very upset and I mean I get it one sweet day is phenomenal a classic but Mariah's whole career y'all is on legendary status and this one distinction not being hers and anymore does not inflation. take anything away from her <laughs> this is without inflation right it's, it's I mean just... it's a totally different game now it's a totally different era. I feel like we know that, and so we sit in it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't right. know. I mean, since streaming, I just have not been able to get pressed about charts because it's too easy for people to do something like this. I don't know who could possibly be equating Lil Nas X's, like, career or anything further than this achievement for this song. Mm-hmm. Alongside anything that it's Mariah just the stand. You know how does. some stands are like they are married to the stats, and so if one of the stats changes, they lose their minds. It's like that sort of thing. But really, in the grand scheme of things, what's the date on the milk in your refrigerator? Like, ask the big questions. Something you know that what I mean? matters, okay? I don't. Something what's important? But I feel like if your queen can be gracious about it, and you know, it's water off her back because she's Mariah fucking Carey. I mean, then y'all can internalize that same message. Um, speaking of charts. Uh oh. She's here. <laughs> oh, Blue that's Ivy. Right. That's right. The young mogul. <laughs> Will she ever take her light up Balenciaga sneaker <laughs> off your neck? The answer is no. The answer is a sound no. It just it's never gonna happen. The youngest artist. So I think Brown Skin Girl um charted at number 76. I don't know how to feel with a bop that makes me want to cry at the same time. Right. It's really strange. Because it is a beautiful song. Like lyrically, it will absolutely move you. But then it the beat is like, wait a minute, I would also like to twerk my ass a little bit here. What's going on? And the vocals plus Beyonce's so child so singing beautiful. on it. Right. It's just an amazing song. It I is. love it it's so, really so, so much. Um, but yes, this makes Beyonce, uh, Beyonce's baby, Blue <laughs> Carter, her first ever. Like she's debuted mm-hmm. on the Hot 100 for the first time. 
as but wasn't she oh i guess glory wasn't on the hot 100 i don't think so yeah i think glory was just she may have just been the youngest person to be on a fucking song or something like that i don't know i don't remember what that award was but this is blue ivy carter the artiste charting herself at seven years six months i mean at this point she's kind of got like an artistic direction absolutely she knows um sort of who she is in Mm -hmm. the game at this point which is um the leader Mm -hmm. and um i'm just excited to be here and and to be witness of what's going on i'm I'm grateful it really is the gift it really i mean and so is she i am grateful to live in the time of beyonce and also the time of beyonce's offspring like blue ivy has already given so much at her young tender age i just am such a fan she personally handpicked those clips from instagram that made it into her mama's brown skin girl video she picked out those photos of auntie kelly that were gonna be arranged just so like you have to fuck with the vision she is an artist she's here for the people and she's seven (laughs) we give that child so much like honestly i think sometimes we forget that she is (laughs) actually just seven years old but that's because at seven i it ain't no way. Like, I know I grew up very regular in Louisiana at that age, but like, I was not creating nothing. Like, like even touch nothing like this at that age. <laughs> Bitch, nothing. I'm sorry. I have pictured Blue Ivy fully aware of how sickening she is. Since birth. Quite literally since birth. That's right. We have- And with so many iconic moments, like telling her mama and daddy to calm the fuck down mm-hmm. front row front row yes. at award shows telling people that they must say a good job to her That's mother right. for killing it at awards i just feel mm-hmm. right telling her mama she's not allowed to record in here right i mean <laughs> all that shit <laughs> so you know having making sure that um her own stands crop um, her mother out of right. photos where she is just looking to taking luxurious. over the photos with her mother. I just to the point where y'all literally deleted Beyonce out of the phone. with America's <laughs> Next Top Model music. <laughs> so I just at this point, oh. I feel as though I'm right, child. Yes, yes, but <laughs> iconic. Also, yes. absolutely. I wonder if Beyonce ever goes. These niggas love me so much that they fake disrespect me in order to, like, stand for my daughter. <laughs> like, that's another level of they literally of called ridiculousness. her a plus one. Yeah, like I called her local. Premiere. <laughs> a flop. Who? Never heard of her. <laughs> Blue Ivy Carter, though. <laughs> Bitch, my attention is over here. I'm sorry, do you see, do you see her? I would literally never talk about Beyonce in this fashion ever at all except to stand for her back. How can you not? <laughs> Anyways. Oh, man. Another moment that a lot of stands seem to go up for in this past week was Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion being on Instagram Live together. Oh, were they? Yes, they were. Um, Megan referred to Nicki as the GOAT, which I'm sure was like... I'm sure that was orgasmic for Anika mm-hmm. because you know that she needs the standing from anyone. That's true. Who <laughs> is female. Yep. And raps. Because she's known to not work with the girls or be too friendly or anything like that. You know, she's... she's uh, The rap girls, anyway, I'll yeah. say. She's not known to be super like has forthcoming a, with them. <laughs> A reputation. Yes. For that. Even though there are moments where she, and especially I feel like over the past few years, has been very um, outwardly supportive of other women in rap and so on. But I've noticed it's mostly women who are huge fans of hers, or at least who are openly supportive of her. I think that she's just like doesn't want to get burned by other girls that she may like you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i don't think that she wants to like be like oh yeah i really love such and such and such and such only for them to be like i don't like that bitch i don't like her raunchy ass her <laughs> ass and all of that. i don't know you know i don't know yeah. but no i mean i think I, well, first of all, I think if Nikki said it, she probably genu- probably genuinely meant it just because she has been 
you know, selective with who she gives her compliments to, which is right. not a bad thing. And, but also, it makes total sense because Megan really is that bitch. She got that body and it's all natural. She can wrap her fucking ass off. She's gorgeous as hell. Like, she has the and has whole... And right. about really liking Nikki Minaj. Right. And, oh, and that as well. She said she liked Nikki first, <laughs> which I wasn't going to say that part, but I feel like that was also probably very important. But it's like, if she was going to pick somebody to, to, you know, go on Instagram Live with and make a moment out of... Which it she makes does sense all that, the time. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that, but... That's a great... Oh, I'm sorry. No, not Nikki. Megan does. Oh, yeah. No, I know Megan does. But I'm just saying for Nikki, if Nikki was going to do it, Megan was the right girl to do it with. So, that's great. They talked about school and education. They talked about... Oh, good. Because Nikki Nikki begging y'all dumbasses to go back to school and y'all just won't do it. (laughs) Nikki be begging the barbs to stay She's always been pro-school. Like, ever since the pink hair in the back days and and performed in clubs. She used to be like... Thank you. No ass. ass. <laughs> I have always appreciated that about and Nika. And <laughs> college. And finish. And stay there. I've always appreciated that. Me shit. too, even though y'all are hard headed. <laughs> because some of the girls refuse. <laughs> you know, and that's not her fucking problem or responsibility. Woo, um, shit. But yeah, I hope that, you know, I really loved seeing them together because I'm a huge fan of both of them and I just like seeing the girls support each other because there's so many people yes. on the opposite side who really want any one of these women especially Nicki Minaj and blank like it don't even matter yep. like matter at this point who the other chick is if she's big small upcoming been coming it don't matter left right you know, like they have to find some way to get them to be for Nicki Minaj or some other rap girl for clicks and foolishness. And so anytime two rap girls link up and say, basically, y'all can eat us out because we don't give a fuck and we're just going to be friends. I have to love be it. Friends, I, I have, have no choice stand. but to stand. Yes. Um, and I sincerely hope that we get music out of this because. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> Me too. Because I feel like being on a track with Megan would absolutely have Nicki inspired to like really come with her shit. It ain't no fucking around like you doing a starships or whatever like i mean well nikki has been dropping some verses lately but okay maybe i haven't been i haven't heard anything since queen Ready. i just heard so. a preview of that pop smoke record or remix that she just i'm assuming she just turned it in but the nigga played that shit at like a party somewhere i'm t- like hype could not wait we won't wait for mastering we won't wait for for label or anybody to say we need the girls to know that nikki is on the remix of this <laughs> okay right now i am excited about it so i'm fully in you know i'm up for all of the nikki music that we can get and everybody <gasps> else but i just heard that megan um delayed hot girl summer like yes she did and she said it's coming out on a new date but it's like gonna be worth it and so now some you know probably 15 year olds and me yeah are going (laughs) like oh it's nikki going with the idea (laughs) that maybe nikki's on the remix to it because i think that would oh that would be great i just realized i missed an episode of queen radio last friday so i know what i'm doing when i get home oh god like what because i feel like whatever clip you heard she probably played it on queen radio no, you. What are you talking? You talking about this verse I just mentioned? Yeah. No, girl. I'm literally talking about the rapper was at a party. Oh, and he played. Yeah, Pop Smoke. Oh, it. I thought Pop Smoke was like the name of a uh, mixtape or something. Like no. that. Never heard of that. It's a person. rapper who has a very <laughs> popular song out called "Welcome to the Party" right now. Oh, okay. And um, nope. mm. I know of it because right. I was in the back of a lift. <laughs> Going out one night, and of course, the driver saw that I was black, so said, Oh, Hot 97. <laughs> so, our power one of hot, one of them. One, whichever and this one shit you came like. on, and I was like, Oh, yes. Okay. I too would like to, to uh, shoot niggas in camera. All right, I'm late then. Um, but yes, anyways, that's cute for the girls. Congratulations. Everybody's cute and lovely and whatnot. Support the girls. Um, Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Mary J. Blige news. Mary J. Blige, um, and 50 Cent have announced that they're going to be uh, what? working together what? on a little power prequel. 
Oh, thank God. I thought you was going to say a mixtape or a tour. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, this is fine. I love that I said that way too. Shit, you get on my nerves. I I was about to panic. Like, wait a minute, what? So, you know, um, I believe the next season of Power, which comes out like at the end of the month, uh, it's supposed to be the last season of the show. I need to catch up on too because Power used to be some good nigga drama. Mm, I, I could never really get through it. Did you start it? I tried. How far did you think you got? Uh, maybe halfway through the first episode. Halfway through the first episode? Halfway through the first episode I saw. I don't know if that was actually the first episode, but regardless, oh, bitch. I could not finish But it. you know what? Knowing you, even past like the dramatics and all of the fuckery that these characters <laughs> okay. get into, you just don't like violence. I don't. You don't like, like niggas getting shot on camera. I don't. Which is like... I mean, I actually don't mind seeing people get shot. I don't like the blood and the gore and stuff. I don't. Right. If you're showing me that, it's a no. Well, they. It's not like Hershey's Kiss is coming out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a way of shooting that stuff without showing like people's brains all over the place, and that I can't handle. I don't remember brains. But it doesn't have to be bl- even just lots of blood. Like there are times when I can't look at SVU and enough of what I've a girl. I can't. <laughs> well, do it's it. not SVU. Um, but yeah, so they have been talking about like doing uh, one of or several different series spinoffs for this show, including a prequel, um, which apparently is titled Power Book Two: Ghost. Power girl. book two like, ghost is the sure, prequel. Like, the girls are gonna watch it anyway, just off the screen. <laughs> and now you're gonna talk about Mary J. Blige gonna be in there. Of course, I'm looking at it. Um, I googled Power Book Two Ghost, and like some kind of fancy ass eight thousand dollar calculator came up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny to me. <laughs> Because I could just totally see somebody. <laughs> I could totally fuck? see somebody like freshman in college or something. It was just like, I spent the money. Right. I Power had to, book two. I had to for ghost the, edition. For trigonometry eight, it was required. So, yeah, this is supposed to like, I guess, add some layers to some of the characters that are on the show now and throw back. I don't know if Mary J. Bodge is going to play a ghost mama or like, okay. or I don't know what's going to be happening. So, uh, I know I'm going to be looking at it. Can't wait to watch. And <laughs> right. I'm already full. Like, honestly, Mary J. Blige has had, like, a lot of um, pretty dope acting uh, yeah, opportunities is. throughout her career. But, like, I love gangsted out Mary J. Blige. So, if we're going to get that, also. please. Her and Umbrella Academy is probably Give one of my favorite Mary J. Blige roles. Because she literally got to be, like, an assassin. And like oh, the yeah, badass, yeah, yeah. and she kind of was a bad guy. And hmm. it, well, maybe that's spo- I don't think that's spoiler. No, I mean, I think if people really wanted to see it, they would have watched it by now. Yeah, but also, even if you have it, I don't think that that's oh, a spoiler. well, yeah, you don't. Okay, I see what you're saying. Well, anyway, I'm excited. She's excited too. She said it was probably the most exciting thing that was going to happen to her this year. So I have a feeling the contract is hit. She said she knows so many <laughs> Tashas. She said I've dated so many ghosts. Of course you have. And so, that's why you're perfect for this. <laughs> Come on, yes. I Free No she, More Pain, Mary finna come out. I hope that she releases like Power Book 2, uh, The Present, like a, like an album yes. inspired. <gasps> Wait, that's what, actually. Like an album inspired genius. by Power. Yes, do it, do it, do like, it. Like rap niggas. Of course, I was about to say and get all the hood niggas on it. All them niggas whose names I don't know. Um, I think it, uh, Curtis Jackson is also working on like a... A drama about the Black Mafia family with stars. He's got like loads more nigga content wow. coming out. And Power has lo- had loads of ups and downs. And it's also one of those shows where I feel like I hate damn near everybody. Okay. But like, I uh, love to hate. And so I just have to catch back up on it because last season I watched Piss Me wow. Off so damn bad. Not because of like, not because it was like poorly done, but just because fuck I hate some of them people but I have to catch back up because I do love it so and I need to um, get on this uh, last season drama and memes and stuff with y'all I miss talking about power mess with um with my good girlfriends on the internet <laughs> so um, that's wow. something to look out for I suppose sure I forgot I'm looking wow 
Now I'm care? deep in the Black Mafia family story. I wish I'd have never Googled that. Because <laughs> now I see where Big Meech came from. A yeah. name I've heard many times, but never made the connection. So think about that. Well, 50 Cent. Sh- why are you, why, why, why is it happening? Is Because yes. Are you kidding? Oh, you know what? Who better to bring this story to television than 50 Cent? <laughs> You're right. It's on my DVR now. <laughs> like, I'm watching it. You're right about that. <sighs> Bitch, did you see the trailer for Cats? Oh, my God. Why would they do that to our good sister? I watched it until I saw that demon. And then I said, guess who's never going to see this movie? And I clicked it right the fuck off. Before we even got to that walking excuse. <laughs> like, that wasn't even anything for me. Of course, Taylor Swift is in a, a musical film or rather a film adaptation of a music you know yeah yeah that's but, actually, that's exactly what it is um but the cgi was so bad is ratchet like why not just put them in costume wasn't yeah. that the whole like fancy of cats like the, was the faces makeup are so and, the faces are really disorienting it's I'm talking about like <laughs> like an early 90s yeah. sci-fi drama on the WB. I don't, it I don't love it. It looks <laughs> horrendous. I don't love it. Seeing these cats with titties. And then you got weird. Jennifer talking about what happened? <laughs> I said, man, Jennifer Hudson is an Oscar winner. What with whiskers. Doing? What are y'all doing with her why would you do this to our good sis <laughs> you already know that we are going Woo. to make memes out of this oh yeah it's jennifer hudson in cats are you kidding me you could have at least got this CGI. it is it, it is looks so scary bad, looking. man it looks really bad I and can't. i know they spent a lot of money on it i like, know they did they had to the cast alone but god damn it looks awful it's a huge cast like a star yeah it is cast. a huge cast Exactly. Even if Taylor Swift wasn't in it, I think I'd still get nightmares. It looks <laughs> very bad. I couldn't even finish the trailer. Soon as I saw her face, I said, "I'm." I already was disgusted by this. Now there is a zero chance in hell I'm going to see it. I just want to hear Jennifer Hudson sing that song, <laughs> "Memory," at the Oscars. Okay, I was about to say, well, look, that'll be on uh, Apple it. Music title, <laughs> whatever you want. And just a regular gown, <laughs> beautiful gown. Yes. Just because. And that would, that would be nice. Fuck. Whoever's, I, like. But that, woo. Did somebody have a little four loco in their coffee at the board <laughs> meeting? It was just like, bitch, you know what we should do? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, it's L.A. Everybody probably did a line first, and then they were like, all right, let's think about it. Oh, don't, don't, don't um, <laughs> perpetuate those. Two. No, you, oh, I thought you was going to say don't coke shame. <laughs> oh, sure. I mean, that's not what I was going to say, but sure, that too. Everybody has their It advice. just, I mean, I just don't know how you watched any of that like I don't know how you saw even the first day of like filming and you didn't just like see what was going on and say shut it down shut it I don't know how we got here but this was a mistake right because they had to have been in like you know those um, mocap suits or whatever and sure you know I don't know what that is the motion capture technology oh mocap like, yes now to, I know what you mean yes and they put like with the little and sensors and stuff you. yes I'm God assuming damn. that's what they did in which case... I mean, yeah, like, but like... I, or maybe they even... They possibly just did their faces, like the the stars, and then had completely other people doing... Because they're going to have to do choreography and shit like that. Right. I don't know the purpose behind it, but damn it <laughs> if it doesn't look like a horror film. I felt like, you know, maybe I should have seen Cats, the play or the musical before this movie. Like, maybe it would make more sense then. But I didn't. also didn't see a whole lot of great reviews of Cats. Like, people were just like, you know, you see Cats because it's fucking Cats and... It's, you that know, it was so whatever weird. iconic, you know, long running. I know that it's like it about some cats. And, <laughs> I um, don't, I don't know what it's about. I mean, I know now, I guess a little bit, but they like have lives like people or something. And then someday comes and they get a new archbishop and right I've, i mean i guess i just kind of thought it was like get a new life cats but in west side story meets rent <laughs> bitch like i don't know something. what it is i couldn't guess 
But I think it has something to do with like relive, like they're having a new life or a new opportunity or some shit like that. I really don't know. I oh, so cats in that. Hamilton. But maybe. <laughs> and I know that y'all are going to, you know, put together all of the tweets and threads that you need to. to no, explain. don't you have to do like, that. We'll, we'll hardcore musical theater. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know that I've read what it's about before. I just don't remember because I've never seen Cats and never really wanted to. And then when I heard there was a movie coming out with Jennifer Hudson in it, I thought, hmm, maybe. And then I heard wow. Taylor Swift was in it and I was like, hmm, maybe not. And then I saw the trailer and okay. I said, oh, definitely. It's about a tribe of cats called the Jellicles. And they make the Jellicle choice, right <laughs> which d- is deciding which cat will Only send to the Heaviside layer Angelica Ross. and come back to a new life. Okay, look, Andrew Lloyd Webber, I don't, I mean, it, a legend, but like, sir, what, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> wow. Moving a right on. Worldwide on. gross billion of 3.5, a worldwide gross of 3.5 billion. Of Jesus. course, that sounds like Okay, all anyway. right, all right. Um, so let's talk about Mario Lopez. This bitch. Okay, let's talk about him. Um. So first he was on um. What was a a, a red <laughs> red from us? Wasn't that her name? <laughs> Lup- Lupita's tether. Ah, uh, yes, her name was Red. Oh. I hate you. You <laughs> on Red's podcast. Um, actually, you could never have Mm-mm. the complexion, no. the bone structure, never. not even, I, I actually am disrespecting mm-hmm. the fuck out of two people in the case. Right. <laughs> you are. <laughs> By making that comparison. Because that Candace bitch Owens chewed up ends. Is more of. She could never. She's more of like. You know what? I'm gonna just move on. She's more like Amarosa's tethered, except Amarosa is also awful. <laughs> so it's just like, but no, that feels way more on point. <laughs> I mean, it's the, I just don't want to disrespect Lapita Nyako in any way. That's all I'm saying. And this, but this bitch, like Candace Owens, the fact that she even has a podcast from that Mario Lopez would go on is where I got stuck. Like, why would you go on? Candace Owens podcast because maybe you know we don't really know why or maybe you're, you're right <laughs> maybe you're a conservative right maybe you're a conservative piece of shit and all this time we just haven't been paying attention because you are so pretty to look at but I know Mario Woo. from that episode of the Golden Girls where he got deported yes he did and Dorothy was trying to save him she didn't she did <laughs> had to go back to Cuba <laughs> so Great episode. Yeah, it was really good. It was a really good one. It was a really good one. Um, So, uh, anyway, this nigga went on Candace Owens' podcast, and um, for whatever amazing reason, they decided to talk about um, kids transitioning and um, why it's dangerous for parents to be supportive of that. Um, Mario says... Look, I'm never one to tell anyone how to parent their kids, obviously. And I think if you come from a place of love, you really can't go wrong. I mean, you could have left just, it right. I'm the sorry, fuck right there. Bitch. I was just. You could have shut up right there. I was just blown back by the fact that there's not a period there. Like, <laughs> it could just be finished. It could just be finished. Finished. Gross, man. Like, you don't even have to like nope. stand on any side of this. And that could have just been the end of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, regardless of how you felt personally. Anyway. But at the same time, my God, if you're three years old and you're saying you're feeling a certain way, or you think you're a boy or a girl or whatever the case may be, I just think it's dangerous as a parent to make this determination. Then, well, okay, then you're going to they're, you're going to be a boy or a girl, whatever the case may be. It's sort of alarming. And my gosh, I just think about the repercussions later on. He also said, when you're a kid, you don't know anything about sexuality yet. You're just a kid. Which but is so not even... Gender identity and sexuality are not the same. Thanks Casey Slater. so much. I don't much. know how you don't know that. Good girl. Oh, <laughs> like, oh this was so fucking maddening. <laughs> so much. Good girl! Yeah, three-year-old is not coming to you saying, Mommy, I'm really horny. Like, no, that's not happening. That would be really weird. Yes, but that's not what's happening. Three-year-olds don't come to you and say, I feel like I'm a girl or 
insist that you call them by girl names or insist that they are allowed to grow their hair out or wear dresses or skirts or whatever because of because of anything other than that is truly how they feel. That is truly who they are. Like just like a three year old can stand fully up in in her a cis three year old can stand fully up in her girlhood and never question it. A trans three year old can do the exact same thing. And it's like. You had it when you said when you come from a place of love, you can't go wrong. Because if you really loved your kids and wanted the best for them, you would at least take the time to look into this whole, like the entire debate around it. See that if you support your child through questioning their gender identity or even if they don't question it, they just come right out with it. That child is so much more likely to be okay, to be good, to thrive, to feel safe, to feel like they have somebody they can talk to about whatever's going on. Like it is so much more damaging to say, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, Boys can't be girls. How da, do you da. not like, understand that? Because you don't even bother to look it up. You ignorant and you want to remain that way. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'm, Real stupid, you know, like I, don't, like, <laughs> I know like, I'm not. So I just sometimes, I guess maybe I have a hard time accepting that that you like there are people who are just truly not listening. And I know, I know no, that don't. a lot of y'all just speak. You know, you just right. say whatever from the bank of bullshit that, you know, exists in your mind and you just feel like that is fact and I don't have to hear anything else about it. But I just think that it's incredibly ridiculous that, you know, transgender people exist and have existed for so long and have been speaking about their experience yeah. with family, with parents and all all kinds of things. Right. For so long and it's just like you still feel comfortable say this dumb shit. As well as like scientific right. study and work right. that has been done on the subject as well. I read a piece on um on NBC's like opinion page mm -hmm. um by Chase Strangio. I don't know if I said your name uh, right or wrong. Uh love, but first of all, I love that the like the sort of subtitle here says parents of trans kids should rely on the American Academy of Pediatrics <laughs> advice rather than a man who recites celebrity gossip off a teleprompter. Oh my God. And I just feel like that's kind of... Honestly, that's all that needs to be said because Mario Lopez, I only see you when I'm in a hotel room. Wow. Period. That is unfair. Letting me know about the new releases Mario available Lopez now in, right from in my hotel room. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> all he's doing is letting me know about the movies that just got out the theater and are now available for streaming in this West End or wherever the fuck I'm at. That's it. So like, but um, girly, girly, you, I, I'll trust your opinion about you know the Kardashians. I'm not gonna trust your opinion about what to do with trans kids. I just don't understand. Like I. <sighs> As, like, a, a person who grew up queer, I can say that if I would have started talking about, like, my identity more and my feelings more, like, as soon as I think I recognized them myself, mm -hmm. it would have still been said... He's too young to understand that or to know that or whatever. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about sex or sexual intercourse. Right. And like fifth grade, I definitely knew I like boys. Right. You know, you know what, what you mean? like, though. So <laughs> even if know, you're not thinking about sex, I definitely knew that I was more interested in things that would have been considered for girls or feminine rather than, you know what I'm saying, going and playing basketball or yeah. fixing my daddy car or whatever. <laughs> so I just think it's ridiculous to make, especially as like a cisgender heterosexual person, to make this call that, okay, well, a child just doesn't know how anything about that or how they feel about themselves at three or whatever. And so it is then dangerous to like push back against that Lord. rather than just being like, I support you <laughs> and how you feel. You are loved yes. here. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to feel comfortable. So, a, 
You don't go through whatever is going on with yourself with confusion and and with anxiety and a feeling like you have nobody to reach out to. Right. And then on top of that, you can then uh, with at least your family's support. Yeah. Focus on the shit that you need to be focused on. Exactly. At three years old. Yes. You know, developing uh, Playing, comfort with social reading. cues and, yep. yes, reading. Fully getting that potty training thing under control. Just all of that other stuff. <laughs> and figuring out everything else as you go along. Because you're not, you, your brain at three is not the same as it is at five or at nope. 10 or at 16 or at 21 or whatever the fuck. <laughs> so, like, you're just going to yes. go. But, again, as I've said, if you're... If you have a child that is trans, if you have a child that is gay or any other one of these damn letters, mm-hmm. that's just going to be what it is, honey. Right. It's just going to, you're not going to like place that in like a little chest somewhere and throw it in the ocean and then and it's bang, right. your child is the straight motherfucker. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The cis nope. motherfucker that you have always envisioned. It's just not how it works. Nope. All you're going to do is teach them shame around who they are and teach them that they can't talk to you about it. Because they're going to pick it up. Fun. One <laughs> like, I knew when I started looking at girls a certain way that I could not say that out loud. I knew that. Same. Without anybody ever really being outwardly homophobic. Like, I don't remember lots of homophobic conversations in my household. But I do remember, first of all, growing up, like, in a very conservative area where that stuff was definitely discussed at church. And then if we saw something, like, on the news or whatever, or if we happened to be out and we saw somebody who was, like visibly gay I guess is the best way to put it then I would hear like conversations or remarks and stuff like that it doesn't have to be everybody in your house is gay bashing or trans bashing 24 7 it can just be the way you react to other stuff that you maybe think your kids are not paying no attention to right so and I definitely was dealing with homophobia whew. before I knew what homophobia was like before I understood that I was gay and like what that was I was called gay you know what I mean Yeah. so by the time I realized like I like boys and that's what gay means I damn sure knew like oh I can't go just go and say there's nobody like I'm gay it was just the thing that was like Oh, that's why people are assholes. Oh, damn. So, See, that's so fucked up. You know what I mean? And all that does. And I feel like I made it out of that situation. And I'm like 31, almost 32 years old now. And I'm okay. You yeah. know what I mean? But there are so many people who that does not happen for them. And I think that like, even though it was very rough for my family right. and it was something that, you know, we just didn't talk about and we avoided it, you know, for most of my like adolescence and stuff, I still felt like loved and supported there. There was just this like looming feeling in the background of God, I hope this shit goes away. Or this nigga don't <laughs> like, please just let him wake up one day and just say that he ain't gay and just, let's just get this shit. You know what I mean? But right. I felt still at least comfortable at home. And I knew that my family wanted the best for me. Some people get kicked out. Some people, you know, have all kinds of like really triggering and, and awful experiences with people like in their family specifically yeah. that don't support them. So it's just like, like just be fucking nice to your right. kids. You know, some of these kids tell you that they want to be a power ranger and they just mean it or mm-hmm. like whatever. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have to just be like the big bad wolf right. to these babies. You know what I exactly. mean? Exactly. You, like, you can just let them be a power ranger. Love them <laughs> and support them. Yeah. And teach them that no, like people are different. Right. It, that's just the way of the world. People are different. And not everybody is out here <laughs> to like secure your seat in hell. Right. <laughs> Just but, you know, people would have to get rid of their own biases. Then they would have to actually confront their biases and work to get. That's rid not of a them. hard mind your goddamn business. Like, mm, mm, I mean, it makes sense, but <laughs> I just you know, I know I'm acting like real <laughs> right, like tonight, like people will just shit. like not be hateful to their own fucking kids because that just makes sense. But a lot of dumbass people will use that same power ranger thing as like a weapon. Like, well, this little nigga thought he was a power ranger last week and two days ago he wanted to be an old town road and today he wanted to be a fire truck so like i don't even know like this whole trans thing is like what if what if my my son says he's a girl and then two weeks later he says he's not well listen i don't understand why you can't just encourage whatever 
If you think it's just like my exactly. child is ultra creative and they're always coming up with different shit they want to be, why not just encourage that? Exactly. In there? You don't say when your your kid says, you know, I want to be uh, Tommy. I don't remember his last name from the Power Rangers. Oh, okay. But like, you're not going. Absolutely not. Okay, <laughs> because all Power Rangers go to Hades. <laughs> And let me tell you something else. We know Jesus or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's just one like facet of the transphobic, right. how homophobic, mm-hmm. like, right. you know, crystal of bullshit. Right. Exactly. But it's like there is like a specific sort of darkness that is targeted specifically to yeah. kids who may be queer or trans or whatever when you could literally just be supportive of your child right. and give them the space to figure themselves out in a healthy environment why right. is that hard why is that hard i just want mario lopez to know that trans people don't have the shortest lifespan on average amongst everybody they don't have the highest suicidal rate amongst everybody because they are in all these loving and affirming households and so for you to say i just think it's dangerous that you love and support your child no matter what is like it's actually dangerous to do the exact opposite it's dangerous to have your point of view it has real life repercussions people are really dying um he later said his publicist said <laughs> The comments I made were ignorant and insensitive, and now I have a deeper understanding of how hurtful they were. I've been and always will be an ardent supporter of the LGBTQ community, and I'm <laughs> going to use this opportunity to better educate myself moving forward. I'll be more informed and thoughtful. Of course, I don't buy this shit either. Of like, course girl, not. You can't say all, you've always been a supporter when you just... Oh, my God. Y'all don't even try. What? Okay. You know that you want to keep... Being on the back of our cabs yep, and in our hotel default rooms, hotel room channel, and telling yep. me what movies I can rent. That's right. And doing whatever the fuck. <laughs> and so you're not about it. And nope. your publicist absolutely told you to shut up <laughs> and get this statement out here yep. so you can keep these coins flowing. I don't buy it. Because otherwise, why would you have been on our Real Monsters podcast in the first place? I just don't. I don't <laughs> know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with that one over there, but. Woo! You can shut up. You can be quiet. Yep. That's and awesome. Extra said the same thing. Like, uh, we work with that nigga, but we don't rock with none of that shit. Like, he oh, said, no. and you know, go to glad.org if you need support or whatever. But we don't know about all that. Did you not see our, our pride visor? Because we don't. Last month? I mean, because I'm just saying. Hashtag capitalism. We okay. We like, love the gay. Visors. <laughs> Danny Paxson. <laughs> Uh, there is a really great podcast called How to Be a Girl, and it is hosted by a woman who has a trans daughter. And she says, you know, when who I thought was my son first came to me and was talking about being a girl, me and her father were like, uh, what the fuck? Like, you know, maybe you're just gay and it's OK if you like boys, blah, blah, blah. You know, like they were like, OK, with the idea of their child being gay, but they couldn't get around the trans thing. And so she talks about that. And then she talks about like. How they had to stop acting like that because one day her daughter was just like breaking down in tears. Like, why won't y'all stop calling me by that name? Why won't y'all, you know, let me grow my hair or whatever? And she was like, I am fucking my child up because I refuse to accept this. And that's when she did like a total 180 and started looking into all this stuff. And anyway, they've been doing the podcast for a while now. This little girl, I think now is probably 10 or 11. And they talk about like how she came out at school to just a couple of friends. But then, of course, the friends told blah, 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 you know, when she was like six or whatever. It's like extremely interesting to hear. But when I listen to this show, they don't do it very often. But when I listen to these episodes, I'm like, more parents need to listen to people who actually have trans kids. More yeah. parents need to listen to trans people Facts. instead of just being like, you're going to be whatever I say you are. And if you're not, then you're going to learn to hide it so that I can accept and like, you. Based on what? Like based on what? Like when we the really white man's Bible. peel these layers back. It's not even in the Bible. Y- y'all are just hateful. Like, y'all are just awful. Based on what? When you could literally... Just be kind. Uh, and or quiet. I mean, they're your fucking kids, man. But okay. So anyway, that was the hot tops, and we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, also, listen, a black lady sketch show. Maybe you mentioned heard us mention it like <laughs> uh, an hour ago. <laughs> it's written by, directed by, starring by. <laughs> 
<laughs> black ladies. That's right. So yeah, Robin Thede and Issa Rae working together on this new sketch show. We got to see, well, at least you got to see, you, you know. I've seen it, yeah. I've seen it well, a few times. just the first episode? I've, yeah, okay. I've screened the first episode a few times. So you've seen it like at least three times? I have. Okay. <laughs> it is just, it gets better and better because I notice new details every time I watch it. Right, because I remember when we saw it in New Orleans, she was like, you know, there's some things in there you might not have missed and it'll be like Easter eggs and stuff you have to remember yeah. for. We're fans. There's a lot of that. So, this is a great uh, new series, super hilarious. It's going to cover all kinds of uh, themes, social norms, anxiety, sex, religion, dating, relationships, and all kinds of hilarious and often unexpected ways. Y'all not ready. Um, I don't want to even like mention too many of like the right. details. I don't want to do want no y'all spoilers. To be yes, I just want y'all's wigs to be blown aback when you see this shit. But it's so many different firsts. It's the first all black women writers room, first black women sketch director, the first sketch series cast. It comprised entirely of black women and then the names involved again Robin Thede, Issa Rae, Quinta Brunson, Ashley Nicole Black, Gabrielle Dennis and then the guest stars even in the first episode alone you bitches are not ready for how many people are on this show yes. Dime Davis is directing and I am just so excited for y'all to see this first one and for all of us to see the rest of the season because it is just truly hilarious and you know we need this it's time for this we deserve so don't forget to check out a black lady sketch show tonight at 11 p.m. on HBO. All right, so we are back. It is time for listener letters. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. We may just read them aloud on the show. Let's see here. Um, Y'all are still going back and forth about this whole, do I have to love my stepkids thing? I'm not. I'm not Why I'm not doing this, this with y'all no such more an expansive saga <laughs> of like, this is so funny I feel like those of you you know y'all are just not ever gonna come to a a middle ground here some of you really feel strongly that you do and some of you are really like eh you can you know learn to like them kids eventually so um let's move on into the questions this first one comes from Kat who says, I recently moved into an apartment in Brooklyn with two other roommates. For the entire month of July, it was just the three of us, but recently a new girl has moved in. She's friends with one of my roommates, which seemed totally fine and chill. The girl is super nice, and I have no issues with her. Today, the new girl started to move in her stuff, and mind you, it was quite a lot of stuff for the tiny-ass rooms this apartment has. When I walked out of my room to check on my laundry, I noticed a few interesting items, including a pet cage and a food and water dish. I didn't think much of it until I heard the new girl and my roommate talking about something named Gilbert. This girl, along with bringing a shit ton of stuff that will not fit in her room, brought a cat with her as well. The best part is that I was never told a cat was going to be joining us in the apartment. I wish I had known because I am slightly allergic to them and often have sneezing fits and itchy eyes when I'm around them for too long. Party. Along with my roommates not telling me that a cat was joining us, I had the pleasant surprise of seeing a litter box, all caps, in the bathroom that I was going to share with this new girl. That's when I knew this shit was not going to fly. I mean... I reached out to my roommate who is friends with the new girl and told her about my allergy and that I wish I had been told about the cat beforehand. My roommate was slightly apologetic and asked if there was any way to work around the cat being in the apartment. I told her as long as the cat stays in the girl's room, I would be fine, along with the litter box being taken out of the bathroom and put in her room as well. My roommate said the new girl probably won't want to do that. Well, guess what, bitch? I didn't want a fucking cat in the apartment. I mean, there we are. At this point, I was beyond pissed off and told if I have to make some compromises like living in the apartment with a cat and having to take a Benadryl every time my allergies flare up, then so will she. And if that means keeping that nasty ass litter box... (laughs) then so be it what do you think i should do about this situation i have no issues having a cat in an apartment i just wish i'd been told about it beforehand especially with my allergy it seems absolutely insane to me that someone wouldn't tell the people living in the apartment that she's bringing a pet with her but maybe it's just me my real issue is a litter box i don't want in the bathroom because i know for a fact that if it isn't changed regularly and starts to stink up the bathroom i'm gonna be livid thanks cat so i don't know i get it oh pissed off (laughs) so i don't um understand why you're saying you don't have a problem with the cat being in the house you literally have a problem with the cat being i have no issues except i'm sneezing and my eyes are watering and i hate that shit box like what are you talking (laughs) so um yeah you obviously have every right to be pissed and i don't understand why it's uh uh slightly compromising or slightly apologetic or whatever. I don't understand why there's an, oh, she's not going to want to. 
you did not tell me that you were bringing a pet into this house. What are, <laughs> right. what are we discussing? I think cats are lovely. Um, I think cats are very bougie. I once said I think that every cat believes it's Mariah Carey, and I stand by that. Um, <laughs> they, you know, they're just divas. They have very um, clear personalities, and they do what they want. Right. It's true. Um, <laughs> which I, you know, I can appreciate that. Yeah. But if you have an actual allergy. I mean, I would have been annoyed just the fact that you brought this animal into the house and didn't tell me that you were going to. You know what I mean? Even if I didn't right. have an allergy, it's like, oh, okay. Thanks for, you know, making assumptions. That's right. fun. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't I don't see what you could do besides tell her that if she don't take that goddamn litter box out of the bathroom, she can take all of her shit out of the whole place. I right. <laughs> like and I in that cat. I really do think that um you are being reasonable as far as like willing to take a Benadryl in your own house. Cause I would not, I'm I would not have been like, do it. you bitches are actually going to have to do something about that fucking cat because you should, I mean, they were, it's beyond inconsiderate to not tell a person who already lives in the, in the apartment that a cat is coming or it's at least ask because some people have allergies that are like life or death. And That's it's not, not even like a secret. Right. Not like a little known fact. Right. And I don't, are, are all of y'all 12? That don't make sense. I mean, I feel like even 12 year olds know cause they'd be obsessed with cats. So, so, yeah, I would be like the fact that I'm even staying in my house and taking medication so that that beast can live here as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm already doing a lot. The litter box is just going to have to go in your room. And if not, then maybe you need to leave this apartment. I hope it's not a thing where all of y'all have separate leases and she signed a lease and paid a deposit and all that. So now she's like legally entitled to the space. Yeah, I'm not running down to Walgreens every goddamn week to go get no money. Okay, and budget. if I do, like, then that is, that's coming out of my rent. She's going to have to pay for my Benadryl. I mean, I don't know what you thought. You got me fucked up. So, that's your <laughs> shit. Get on out of here. Right. You and Boots. <laughs> <laughs> can beat feet man and I would be annoyed because you know I might actually be able to get along with the cat depending on if it's the type to like get angry and randomly lash out at people because you know I've gone through that before I think cats are beautiful and I think that cats are very very funny you know like, they're rude dogs are I mean but that's why they're funny they're just <laughs> they do like when your cat just like knocks your macbook off of the table or something like right. that it's just like yours and just I, looks at you like Hmm. Oh well. well. I hope you didn't need that. Or nothing. I said I was Surprise. fucking hungry, Greg. <laughs> I meowed seventeen times. Surprise! I did it on purpose. <laughs> I do what I want. Yeah, I run this shit. That's why that cat had to get out of my house when I had one a long time ago. Oh yeah, I went and donated it to a church because. You know, you just make a lot of demands around here and don't clean nothing up and don't pay no bills. And I just got, you know, I got tired of having a dependent. I did not look at it as like a child. <laughs> I looked at it as a responsibility. So, right. Which so, children are, but, you know. I personally get miserable when I'm sick. Uh, if, if my nose is stuffy, I want everything to die. Right. So, Ooh. I just would, like you. At home? Like, Ugh. At my home. No, hell no. You got to go. To. You got to go. I'm talking about me. <laughs> But if you, as you say, like, it's it's so considered, like, you are supremely taking that L with grace you are, by saying the cat can stay. I, you know, don't mind taking Benadryl. Or so if that woman nope. can't meet Damn. you in the middle on this, she needs to leave. And I just feel like that's the flat surface of the situation. Yes. Like, oh, well, she won't want to have a litter box in her bedroom. I bet she fucking won't. And guess what? I don't want a cat in my apartment. You know what I don't want? <laughs> to smell cat piss <laughs> every fucking time. And that's another thing. If that cat shits and it takes you seven hours to get home, I don't care if you buy the good litter that is allegedly odor masking or whatever. You know the smell of cat shit in your bathroom. And then when they come out of the box, sometimes they leave the litter on their paws. So then you have to sweep it up all the the answer is no. Get that shit out of my human bathroom and into your tiny ass box size room. Or get out of here with that cat. Or get out. <laughs> 
I mean, it's simple and clean. Oh, man. Okay, good luck to you. Our next question comes from Anissa, who says, I'm a 22-year-old college student. My best friend is 21. She got pregnant in January, lives with her fiancé in another town, and they're struggling to make ends meet, but they're excited to have this baby on the way. They've gotten a lot of financial support and help from family and friends to buy stuff like cribs, clothes, diapers, etc. As her best friend, she's making me her daughter's godmother, and it seems to come with a lot of responsibility. Even though I'm a relatively <laughs> broke college student. <laughs> well, let's, let's keep going. If you, by definition. Even though I'm a relatively broke college student, I'm having to come out of pocket to purchase a $250 stroller sas- slash car seat. I paid for her baby shower invitations. I'll be driving three hours home from college to be there for the birth and miss a week or two of work and school because she wants me to be there to hold one of her legs while she gives birth. Huh? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I must have skipped over that part earlier. Um, and she wants... Okay, so you could have left that out and just said she wants me to sleep over at their place to help and support during that time. <laughs> you could have just... Maybe that's like a a, a metaphor. Or I mean, like, maybe it's just like, I love you so much, I want you to be in the room and like holding one of my legs. But I'm, I'm good for just being in the room. So I don't... <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to the letter. <laughs> she, also, she has made it clear that she expects me to help babysit and assist with her daughter as often as possible when I'm in town. She's just been acting like I'm supposed to be at her beck and call with everything involving this new baby. Recently, she told me she opened a savings account for her child and suggested that I donate to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Already kind of overwhelmed by everything. I texted something along the lines of, she's not my child, so I'm not responsible for her savings <laughs> account. Smiley face. <laughs> Smiley face and like the laughing to the side. Smiley face. It's like laughing with the little tears coming out. (laughs) But I made it clear I would help in other ways when I have the financial means to do so. (laughs) She seemed really turned off by my statement, which I somewhat understand. (laughs) And said, if that's how I feel, she wouldn't make me the godmother then. (laughs) Is it wrong for me to feel like if she chose to have a baby... She shouldn't act as if I'm obligated to be a second mother. I feel like that's her baby. So she and her nigga are responsible for all of it. Shrug. It's not that I mind helping because it's not that I mind helping because I don't. I love her and her soon to be daughter so much. I just feel like she's expecting too much of me and I did not sign up for this. She did. Or am I just not being supportive enough? Growing up, we always talked about having families and our future children. And I think for her, this is a really cute thing we can do together. But I have so many plans for after school, like traveling, working, interning, passion projects, etc. I want to let her know my time, money and energy is for myself. And at this age, I'm trying to be as selfish as possible. I feel like this is just the beginning of her expectations. And as time goes on, she will grow resentful if I'm not around enough. How can I express this to her without being a bitch? Or should I keep my mouth shut and continue being there for her? Thanks. Love you guys. Anissa. (sighs) You good? You calm down now? (laughs) It's... The comment was great, right? But then the smiley face. Yeah. Really <laughs> She was trying me. to take the edge off of it. I'm right. Not, I'm not giving, I'm not responsible for your baby's saving account, bitch. Right. <laughs> smiley face. <laughs> I, I was about to say, like, so you're, you're the daddy. <laughs> like, right. You, right. You father, you father this child. And she's, and she said that they chose to have a baby this young because the girl and her fiance weren't using condoms or birth control, which, I know a lot of y'all do yes. that, and but would not necessarily call that planning to have a baby, even though it absolutely is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Y'all don't call it that, and y'all don't look at it like that, but that's what it is. I so, mean, pretty much. So I think maybe because, you know, you're 22, your friend's 21, y'all are really young. Maybe she don't know what a godmother's duties are, but it is not like the the... It is the backup mother, but not like in a... You buy everything for my child. You contribute to her savings account regularly. Like that, that's like a stepmother. That Godmother <laughs> is not stepmother. <laughs> that's not what that is. Godmother, I mean, traditionally is supposed to be the person responsible for your child's religious upbringing and making sure you know that they are, all, it has more of a religious um, subtext to it. But even I think. I thought it just meant that you take care of them. Right. Even colloquially, it's like, you know, if we die, the baby goes to you, you know, if it can't go to family or whatever. Or sometimes it just means my mama's best friend. And so I'm the yeah, I mean, And it don't really mean nothing. Traditionally, yes. today, <laughs> right. that's what it is. The godmother might, you know, get together with the sister and the cousins to throw the baby shower. You know, that's like, it's like saying that's my mama's best friend. Pretty much. 
But best friend is not like required to spend all this money. Like you, you saying that like you have been told, well, as a godmother, please spend two hundred fifty dollars on this car seat, and please buy this and this and this, and deposit to the savings account because you're the godmother. No, you are asking for that help because you really want it or need it, and that's real. But don't make it like a this is your duty as a godmother thing because that's not it. So maybe I would just say it to her like that, like girl, that's not what a godmother is, and I'm happy to be here for you and support you and your baby of course I love that little nigga but like you are the mama here like this child has two parents and I'm not one of them I just can't I was trying to think of a sugar-coated version of that (laughs) and nothing is coming to mind yeah I I mean I know she's pregnant so you want to be like delicate with her feelings I guess because you don't want her to be stressed out or whatever but yeah be delicate with her feelings i guess now and you can um do all of the godmothery things that you would have done regardless leading into the actual birth of this child um and then possibly if you can because it's not like she wants you to be spending money uh pre and post yeah like so start contributing regularly to the savings account like set up a direct deposit (laughs) at some point it just needs there needs to be a gentle reminder for her that Mm -hmm. you have bills yes girl i'm broke college like (laughs) things to do for your life right um and that it is actually past the fact that you aren't uh, obviously this child's parent it is inconsiderate to just say that because you are my friend or because you're my child's godparent that you are expected to you know relinquish monies from your checking account right every other wednesday or whatever like nobody has (laughs) what are what are we doing here right exactly that so Woo! I think I would just, yeah, try to say that to her as as gently and as nicely as possible. But you're not being a bitch to say, I literally don't have the money for this and it's not my responsibility. Can't afford it, girl. You can lie. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to do it. I mean, and you know, in a couple of months when she has that baby, she is going to realize, like, she's going to get a a very real um, awakening to what parenthood is really like. Because... When my mama and daddy had that baby when I was damn near 14 years old, my life changed. I bet. And I knew then the teen parent life was not for me. It was on because you. I was a little junior teen parent. <laughs> I think it was on your nerves. I years had that later. nigga. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Wait, can you say one more thing to me about it? I'm gonna fight you. But like I my mama really I was I was really thrust fully into child rearing and I think she yeah. did that on purpose. Probably. So that I would know. Like, bitch, it's not no fucking fun. Don't bring <laughs> any home. <laughs> Woo, so she's gonna get it and uh she's gonna know. But I you know what's really crazy? It's like the best friend, the godmother, all them people usually end up spending so much money on your baby anyway. That's also kind of You know how much true. shit Amy's be buying? Yeah. I'm constantly buying shit for these Especially kids. once they actually get here, it's like, oh, uh, I was in Target. I, and I saw, and oh I my God, it's so cute. Bitches got to. ducks. I had to. <laughs> for the gram. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, yes, oh, let me come pick Alexis up so we can take pictures. Right. Like, the free babysitting you get alone, like, just let her know. Like, you be girl. taking these motherfuckers to shit they don't even, they couldn't possibly give a fuck about. <laughs> at six months <laughs> baby don't want to go to fucking Chuck E. Cheese oh. <laughs> she's six months old does and not so care what? about and this so what I used to oh my god JB's so sick of me like <laughs> I'm taking Noah and we're going everywhere we're having brunch at American Doll <laughs> she's like what the fuck <laughs> well, okay bye <laughs> so yeah you know just remind her like bitch I'm your friend I'm here for you I cannot wait to be you know ain't ain't Pat or whatever you said your name was. <laughs> I know it's not Pat. <laughs> like, but everybody got on your Pat, right? Everybody got one or a play one. So right. yeah, just let her know, like, bitch, I'm your friend. It <laughs> shouldn't come with like a financial requirement. Okay, last question comes from Tiana, who says, "I'm 23. I'll get straight into it. My father is on the DL." Oh, right. We on my 23rd, straight into it. We are <laughs> or not so straight. I <laughs> I cannot stand you. <laughs> On my 23rd birthday, I paid him a surprise visit since we live three hours away from each other. 
Okay. Oh, this is great already. Right. Right. This, this, this is not good. Knocked on his door. And as soon as he opened it, I saw a bald man with no shirt on and silk shorts jump up from the couch and ran and hide. Run to hide. <gasps> My father looked at me and seemed embarrassed. I quickly apologized to about I quickly apologized to him for coming over unannounced, jumped in my car and went home. Uh- when I got home later that night and told my mother what I what I experienced at his house, she seemed unbothered and said, well, when we were together, I caught him cheating on me with a man. Shout out to your mama for already knowing. I was shocked, but I didn't say anything. Fast forward a month later, and I don't know how to feel about this situation. I'm not ashamed of my father because I myself am pansexual. But should I speak oh, with him about what I saw? Okay. <laughs> should I speak with him about what I saw? Is it my place? Should I wait until he comes to me? Throughout this time, he's been ignoring me and won't respond to my text messages. So I feel like I've messed up. What should I do? Thanks, you guys. Tiana. Call people and let them know you're coming to <laughs> First and foremost, Tiana, I know that's your daddy, but girl, you live three hours away. God damn, you Tiana. You can't just be popping up on people. I can't believe he don't check enough. Check your fucking peepholes before you open the door. I can tell y'all not single women living in a big city because I can't believe your daddy didn't look through the, the peephole or the key. Uh, she had to have had keys. No, no, no. She knocked on the door and her daddy opened it. So wait, how did... Right. I'm like, you don't check the fucking peephole before wait, wait, you. Wait, wait. <laughs> so her daddy opened the door. She said she knocked on the door. And as soon as she opened, as soon as he opened it, she saw a bald man on the couch who didn't have a shirt on, only had on some silk drawers. And that man got up and ran to the back. And so then her daddy seemed he was her daddy was looking embarrassed. And oh, she was so like, her daddy probably has a tribe in where he's at. OK, perhaps. He maybe probably so. Just, maybe it was another one. OK. Maybe that... like it was another <laughs> grinder jump off. <laughs> And I don't know. Like, I just can't believe that man didn't look through that little hole in your door that is there for dessert. that reason. And then it was actually <laughs> And Unless um, you don't have one, because, I mean, that could have saved this whole... Well, you know, I think it's... Yeah, I'm still a little confused ab- uh, about uh, the uh, the moving and grooving of how this all went down. Well, that's how she described it. This could right. be a fake letter that they found off Reddit or something. No, no, y'all we, know y'all I mean, love sure. To troll us. That's, that's sure. Y'all that's love to troll us with fake shit. I'm just going to run with it anyway because this is fun. <laughs> so, yeah, but if your mama... <laughs> here's what I would do. I'd probably... Uh, well, Actually, I just realized that's terrible advice. To say I would go back over there right now. No, no, <laughs> don't do that no more. <laughs> um, no, I think that you need to find a time to get with your father in person. Um, yes, and at the very least, if you are going to go back over there, be like, "Hey, right, coming over this weekend. Want to talk to you? Love mm-hmm. you so much. <laughs> Something like that." But I think you need to sit down with him and um. Basically, first I would, yes, apologize for coming on for unannounced because I don't give a fuck. Like, that's just, I that's mean, wrong. Like, come on now. You that's wrong, girl. I mean, like, you know, you want to surprise people sometimes. That's lovely or whatever. But assuming your daddy is living alone with a life of his own or whatever. Right. I mean, come on. But <laughs> past that, yeah, I would sit down with him and just let him know, like, hey, so... <laughs> I guess the kitty cat's out of the bag. uh, (laughs) Maybe you should tell him that you're pansexual so that he feels more open to talking to you about his I mean, I don't even feel like that's necessary. Maybe that, I mean, I definitely think that that could help. Um, Maybe it'll make him feel more comfortable. But I don't even know that that's as necessary as just expressing to him like you don't have an issue with it or whatever and you don't want him to feel like y'all can't speak or have a relationship you don't want him to feel awkward around you or right. whatever because of what he witnessed especially now that i'm i guess under the impression that that bald man wasn't hopping off dick <gasps> no that would have been oh my god that would have been way too much no she didn't catch them in the act oh god no that would have been way too much <laughs> oh no <laughs> that would that's life changing right there <laughs> you think he was was he good for him you like, see them together. I just want you, Daddy, I'm concerned because I just feel like, where do he work at? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I don't know. like I saw a tattoo on the left side of his face and I just don't know what that represents. I just don't trust him. That's, I just have a bad feeling. <laughs> I don't know. Like, whatever. Yeah, but yeah I think, Daddy. Right. I apologize for, you know, uh, jumping him while he was... <laughs> 
trying to get jumped. And um, yeah, I mean, even if it has to be a phone call or a FaceTime or something, she's saying he's like ignoring her. Right. See, that's what makes me feel like that that is bothering me and I guess I can't really put my finger on why because I just feel like like, damn I got called by her mama and by (laughs) Um, her like fuck so maybe so maybe a shame then I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna try to be um I'm gonna take this kindly as opposed to like this grown man needs to grow the fuck up and face his daughter you know I'm gonna try to look at it as this is somebody who is possibly struggling with a lot of shame and doesn't know how I mean we're talking about the gays you know what I mean like we're talking about it's not like (laughs) I hate you but but for real you know what I mean like it's that's literally some shit that that Uh, people struggle with every single day of all ages and a lot of a lot of us who sort of, whether we have kids or not, we get to a place where we might be sort of uh, living our life, like, sort of separately than people that we are close to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you move away or if you just got your own place and you're just sort of doing your own thing and maybe you see your family on the weekends or holidays or whatever like that, you're sort of just left to sort of live your gay life and be on the DL at the same time. Right. Because people you want to keep it a secret from are completely separate of that life. That makes sense. So a lot of those people are still struggling with their identity, even though some of you, some of the people that they know and hang out with on the regular may not realize that because to them, you just gay. You know what I'm saying? We go to the gay club all the time and you know what I'm saying? We don't slept with the same people. I don't know. I'm just like, (laughs) like, I'm not trying to perpetuate stereotypes. I'm joking. (laughs) I'm just saying like, it sometimes takes situations like this for us to realize that there are still like things that we're struggling with. Right. I would that assume sense. that his daughter catching him in a situation that sort of outs him or whatever right. is going to is probably something that he just doesn't know how to talk about, doesn't want to discuss. And yeah, there might be a, a, a layer of shame and all of that. And just like, how do you say to your child, I am gay. Um, your mama probably did tell you that I cheated on her with a nigga. And uh, here's my story. And like a lot of niggas ain't ready to have those kinds of conversations yeah, ever. I they rather so. just go into the ground with their business and their business, you know, wow. but so I, mean, I say yeah. all of that to say okay. it, it may be difficult to just try to get him on the phone and shit like <laughs> that and FaceTime if you done already, you know what I'm saying? If he's ignoring text messages. If he's ignoring yeah. you and things like that. If you can, great. But if you can't, I would try to find a way to get with him in person and just let him know, like, look, daddy, I'm not sweating that. So sorry that I got wow. caught in the middle of your business or whatever. But so you might really have to pop up on him again since he's not answering the phone. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, be like, nigga, I'm coming over on Saturday. Yes. I'm coming there over you on go. Saturday. Yes, there we go. That works. <laughs> I just want to talk to you. Be ready to see me Saturday at noon so we can have this conversation because I need you to hear this shit and we just go talk. And yes, you have to talk to me because I'm your child. Okay, bye. Uh, that feels fine. I feel like that pretty much gets to it. <laughs> All right. That wraps up the questions for this week. Send yours to asktheread at gmail.com. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all. So let me tell you something about a little service called HelloFresh. Um, it's America's number one meal kit. You get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door that are sincerely quite delicious. All you have to do is cook it and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality from step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients. You'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and take off HelloFresh and all that damn, oh, I forgot to buy this and oh, now I gotta go back and all this other food. Everything you need is right there and there's something for Everyone from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian uh, things. They've got a fun menu series like uh, Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers, all kinds of stuff. HelloFresh has more five star recipes than any other meal kit, so you know you'll get something incredible. It's flexible and it fits your lifestyle. Easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. Yes, actually, the fact that it comes right to you and it's all the ingredients and everything you need for me is the best part. Because what I don't... First of all, I'm almost always cooking for one. 
And yeah. so having to go to the grocery store, buy all these ingredients, a lot of them I'm only going to use once. And then whatever I'm cooking makes at least four servings. So it's like now I have to force myself to eat this, you know, for like the rest of the week or whatever. HelloFresh just takes all that away and is like, here, girl, this is what you need to make this. And it's plenty and you're going to love it. And it's great. You can try HelloFresh today for $80 off your first month. Go to HelloFresh.com slash the read 80 and enter the read 80. It's like receiving eight meals free only at HelloFresh.com slash the read eight zero promo code t-h-e-r-e-a-d-8-0 try hellofresh today now let's move on also this week is being brought to you by philo say goodbye to expensive tv bills and horrible customer service and say hello to philo it's a new way to watch all the tv you love philo has over 50 of your favorite channels like mc food network history even vh1 if you want to see karen king bop somebody in the head or whatever <laughs> You can catch all of the big shows like The Walking Dead, SpongeBob, Paw Patrol, if your kids are, you know what I'm saying, so yelling stupid. at you today. <laughs> Plus tons of classic shows and movies. File is the cheapest way to watch these channels and never miss a minute of the shows you can't live without. For only $20 a month, you'll get live and on-demand TV plus unlimited DVR. So you can save as many shows as you want. Watch your favorite shows whenever, wherever, on your TV, phone, or computer. File is also available on Roku, Android, iOS, Fire TV and Apple TV, so go and check them out. It's never been a better deal, and you can start your free trial instantly. No credit card needed. So to start your free trial, visit philo.tv slash read. That is P-H-I-L-O dot TV slash R-E-A-D. Go and watch something nice. $20 Relax. a month, so, girl. Can't I mean, beat that with a stick. That's all you need. So go tell them that we said hello, and let's start, I mean, wrap up the show. <laughs> okay, so we're back. It's now time for the read. It is. Let's cook this shit up and give it to them for it's a time scalp us. Go. <laughs> they, they are about to. I said Friday afternoon, and I feel like starting at literally noon sharp, they probably started refreshing <laughs> iTunes. So let's get this done. All right. So for me, this uh, this episode, I want to discuss um, this case out of Michigan of this 10-year-old boy. That was uh, charged with aggravated assault after playing dodgeball with one of his classmates. What? So. Um, oh, God. He must be black. Uh, Kamishi, I want to say, Triplet Lindley, her son, black. Okay. Her son, Bryce, was suspended from Erickson Elementary School for, quote, throwing a ball back at a student during a recess, she said on Facebook, when she was hoping to raise funds for legal services. What? Because he was uh, charged with aggravated assault after a mother of his uh, student, a child who uh, is apparently being kept anonymous, fair. Yeah. Um, was struck in the head with a game uh, with a ball during a game of dodgeball. This allegedly caused a concussion for him. Um, and his mother said that she uh, decided to press charges because, like, this wasn't the first time this happened. Because surprise, they play dodgeball more than once a year, <laughs> um, and Whoa. that he was targeted, like, in mid-April or something. And was, like, hit in the head with a ball at that point. And it wasn't, like, made clear if it was this same child, this Bryce, mm -hmm. that hit him with the ball before. But, like, honestly, personally, this is just my opinion. I don't even know why schools still have dodgeballs. Right. That's like, not, that's not, like, a, it's not safe. <laughs> it's just, you're literally throwing balls right. that are not made of cotton candy. You know what I mean? They're not medicine balls or rocks. But, like, you know what I'm saying? It's not that difficult for a kid to get hurt playing dodgeball. Maybe not seriously right. hurt, but I grew up watching dodgeball yeah. games, playing dodgeball games plenty of times. And it was it quite common for a kid <laughs> to get smacked in the face by a ball in yep. the back of the head or any other part of the body and be like, oh... It's a wrap for me today. It really hurts I'm in the face, though. Dodgeball. It really hurts in the face and the head. I've been... <laughs> and obviously, like... So many times you know, in dodgeball. <laughs> teachers, well, most teachers, I believe, tell the students not to throw the ball or try not to throw the ball at another student's head or whatever, I mm -hmm. believe. But yeah. cannot say the same. Or can't Might say just that need that to stop all it. games where children I mean, throw things at each other. <laughs> like, why, I don't know. Might just why need to stop still, doing that. But anyways... Um, so the mother of the alleged victim, 
says that he has a chronic brain infliction. Oh, my God. Which I guess, like, adds to the difficulty of whatever his seriousness may have been. So why the hell did they even let him play? So why... Oh, see. Even. See, you need to sue the school district, sis. Let him play. Because <laughs> uh, if they had this on file in the nurse's office or whatever, that this boy had this medical condition, and somebody put him in a game where children are throwing balls at each other, the, somebody was negligent there. That's fucked up. No. Mm-mm. So. <laughs> You're not charging another 10-year-old with assault, dog. That is absurd. You just pretty much hit the nail on the I'm so sorry. I was no, just no, no, stunned no, no. by that. You're <laughs> completely correct. Because it's like, if you have this chronic brain stem infliction, then why even, he shouldn't be participating no. in games like that. There should be like a clear discussion. Yeah. There should be a clear message that is relayed to the school. And that is like enforced when it comes to this kid and his specific yeah. needs. So like a contact sport or anything physical like that, yes. that, that could like sincerely harm him. He should just not be participating. Right. In. Pull so him out of gym altogether. Let him play computers. <laughs> Let him play computers. <laughs> do they still do that? <laughs> there are still computers classes. I would think and hope. Well, look, whatever they do, whatever playing computers is called now, I'm learning like, to go, Google's computer literacy telling what like a, a good thing. source is versus a fake one but no like i was horrible in gym because of course i was sitting down and i don't know <laughs> writing fan fiction or doing whatever the fuck i was doing but was so good in gym i still th- i bet <laughs> i was so I, good in gym no, <laughs> elbow, i'm just not even I'm not shocked at all <laughs> anyway only the glasses slow me down so <laughs> so like i don't i i definitely think that it's 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 I don't know if important is the word, but I I think that it can be fulfilling for kids to get the gym experience or whatever in school, but safely and yes. like with sense when it comes to the people who are supposed to be protecting them and guiding them in school hours in these classes or whatever. Right. So if your baby has this infliction right. and you know that, not to mention that you're saying that this is a situation that happened before. Right. Right. Why? And again, I don't know if it's the same the same student that was being charged and that was not made clear. I feel like if it was, it would be, but I'm not going to make any assumptions. Right. Either way, the mother says that when it like in that prior incident, he said to his mother, it's OK, mom, because we're still going to be friends. So to me, this doesn't give so he wasn't being like, bullied or something, you know, he was being targeted because you know, these kids are messing with him or he was being bullied or anything like that. It gives me like, hey, um, <laughs> you girls in this dodgeball thing <laughs> might need to evaluate that a little bit better. So what pisses me off is the fact that you would then, rather than taking responsibility for the the situation that the child has and immediately taking, like, even if you didn't think prior to him having that first incident that, oh, maybe he shouldn't play dodgeball or maybe I should look into, like, the things that he is participating in in his gym class. Damn sure after it fir- happened the first time, it should have just been like, okay, right. well, that's a wrap. But now you're like, I'm going to charge this 10-year-old who threw a dodgeball in a game that's about yeah, throwing, no. dodge- throwing balls and dodging them. Like, right. I'm going to charge him with aggravated assault, a child, a 10-year-old. What? And what also pissed me off is that the prosecutors drop, they dismiss the charges, obviously, because there's a 10-year-old mm-hmm. playing dodgeball. And this is absurd. And this is fucking stupid. But Maria Miller, who is apparently the assistant prosecuting attorney at Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, framed the whole thing in this press release as like, well, um, this had nothing to do with race. And the mother of the alleged victim had every right to go to the authorities. And the authorities had an obligation to investigate. Yes, like she did literally have the right to call the police. Of course she did. Of course, And of course, then they have the obligation to... Inv- you're not telling us new things. You're not right. saying anything here. <laughs> what you're trying to say, what you're trying to do is dash over the possibility that race could have charged this um, 
this incident to get to right. like the level that it got in the first place. And that's foolishness because first of all, what you're not about to do is convince anybody with good goddamn sense that y'all don't look at, treat black people wildly differently in like every single category in this country. Nobody's going to be like, oh, you know what? You have a point, sis. Racism's fake. I don't like, I don't even know <laughs> what you're trying to attempt here. Right. Because even, even in you investigating the situation, dropping the charges or whatever the case, dismissing it, the I think like more of the annoyance, the ire is directed towards the mother. At least it is for me because it's like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> like I still am stuck on sister and call an attorney <laughs> and be like, so uh, wherever they are, Wayne County Schools District, uh, how do we get a lawsuit together? <laughs> because they put my baby in this violent ass class after he's already been hit in the head before and they know he has this injury or whatever. So like, who do we sue and how do we get started? I'm shocked her mind didn't go there first because, like, having the other boy arrested, like, or not well, arrested, he wasn't arrested, I guess, yeah, right? but that is absurd. But, like, having him charged with or aggravated assault. I mean, and who, I just want to know who was the grown person? Was it the assistant prosecutor? Was it the regular prosecutor, the, the overall prosecutor, or whatever? Who was the person who said, yes, charges are justified in this case? That and 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 the thing is, if this happened in Michigan, in the area of Michigan, of they say, then it's probably there may have been black people behind it. But first of all, black people are anti black all the time and look down on black people who they feel are not doing, quote unquote, the right thing. That's things. quite common. First of all, that happens. And secondly, you can't tell me that racism is still not a factor because you would have never done this to white kids. It would have never fucking happened. You would have never charged a 10-year-old white boy with aggravated assault for hitting somebody in the head during a fucking kickball or whatever. I understand that that was a, a common statement for people who were paying attention to or following this uh, story. A mess. But it's like trying to then... It's like... To me, it just feels like another way that people are going like... You blacks are always talking about that whole black thing. And like, that's not even what this is because the way that calling 911 works is you're allowed to do it. And then we like <laughs> talk about it. So like, Mess. what's the problem? Shut the fuck up. Like nobody's even listening to that or even concerned with that so much as this should have never Ooh. been a situation in the first place. Because if your baby got a chronic brain infliction, you should be making the steps to make sure that they don't have your child harmed, fucked up in a situation yes. like this. And the fact that, like I said before, even if that was not something that you considered, it happened before and it was allowed to happen again. Right. So taking this situation and placing it on the shoulders of this 10-year-old black child is absurd, it's ridiculous, it's dangerous, and it's fucking asinine. Right. So I don't know what the fuck any of the adults are doing over there in, all of y'all have Penn, lost Michigan. your fucking like, mind. Like, all of y'all are, are out fucking of your fucking it. minds, though. I'm finished. That's hell? it. These are 10-year-olds. Did anybody ever stop back and say, these are 10-year-old people? You are not going to tell a 10-year-old <laughs> that they are permitted to throw a ball at a <laughs> just as hard as their 10-year-old arms can go <laughs> for fun. And it's not like this is some huge kid either. I just Googled him. He's a tiny little skinny baby. Like, I, I don't think that... I think everybody here just needs to be real. Like, just be, be don't be with fucking stupid. Right? Don't be stupid. Kids look at y'all. They pay attention yes, they do. to your actions, and uh, until they are old enough to understand how dumb right. a lot of y'all are, <laughs> they have to just imagine like this is like the way that the world works, yep. and it's fucked up to be young and have to deal with like am I gonna go to jail am I what did I do wrong like I, 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 yeah like it is. that's just it's just, stop being fucking idiots Woo. To, to kids maybe y'all need two different options in gym like a low impact for the kids who is not doing all that ridiculous dodgeball bullshit and then a high impact for all the kids who need to burn off their energy because they it's feel, not like like why not have something like you could go play on the playground or you can come do this violent game it's not a new concept to make like arrangements and adjustments in any kind of game or, or like yes, events in gym for children they to deserve make sure they, 
Yes, it is actually their right. right. That's why I'm like, we need a lawsuit here because <laughs> your child has the right to be accommodated for their disability or whatever else in a public school in if America. You're, if you're claiming that he had the the injuries that he did from this situation after it happened already. Let's start suing. Being, you know, pissed about that and wanting action taking place totally makes sense to me. Deciding that that action should be placed on a 10-year-old's shoulders to me no. is where things get a little fucking looney to. Not when there are so many grown people who failed the children in this situation. I'm just every lost. Time. <laughs> so take that bullshit right back to where you found it because you feel, you sound and look <sighs> stupid out here, lady. Woo. Hey, man, is that it? Yeah, that's Okay, it. so this week I'm not really going to cuss this girl out. I'm not, well, I mean, I might a little bit, you know how I get, but I'm really going to try to do like what I've seen people on the internet call a call in where you like are trying to genuinely get somebody to see where they fucked up and hope that they do better. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to try to do here without being too awful. Have you heard the story about Carissa Pinkston? Do you know who that is? No. She's a model. She's modeled with lots of big brands. Most recently, Savage X Fenty. Um, Yes. I have heard about okay. this. What so, <laughs> a duck. Okay, go ahead. So she's 20 years old um, and she recently got exposed by her old Facebook posts like most of y'all do. You get caught up with your old posts wherever. Anyway, she used to make these very transphobic comments and this was evidently not that long ago like this year or last year or whatever. Oh, okay. Saying that, you know, being trans doesn't make you a woman. It just means you're trans, which is like... I mean, yes, because there are trans men and non-binary people, but also no, because what I know what I know that you're trying to say is that being trans doesn't mean you're a woman. When if you're a trans woman, you are a woman. That's That's why the woman's there. It doesn't see like I know you're trying to be ignorant here. But anyway, she also made another post that said being trans does make you a woman in a transgender context according to gender and not sex. That's how they want to be perceived. In a biological context, there are females and males. This is the world in 2019. Again, um, this is just ignorant. Like, we're not talking about the quote-unquote biological sex because you're also... I just don't know what you get Everything That is also not as clear-cut as you seem to think it is. There are intersex people. There's all kinds of variations in the human race and all you have to do is like look it up what I don't understand is you children have like a a, a fucking eons worth of information available to you for free on demand and you just refuse in you're you're on it all the time (laughs) you don't understand like I feel very blessed to be part of the last generation who grew up had a childhood without internet but then it was fully part of their lives we still got our encyclopedia We used to have to go to the library if we wanted answers for things or check the encyclopedia and that might be five, ten years old. So you really got to yeah, go double fact, check because <laughs> shit may have changed. That encyclopedia okay? like now would be like, what the fuck? What is it? Who like, are the USSR? Bitch, what? <laughs> so anyway, we're getting off track. So she made these ignorant comments. Friend took a screenshot, shared them with or, you know, friend, whatever. Um, And of course, she it was like all this backlash. I think she got dropped by the Savage X brand. They were like, oh, no, girl, ain't got time for that. Can't do that. And um, probably has some sort of clause with the rest of these companies, too, where it's like, if you embarrass us, we're not booking you no more. So she um, faced a lot of backlash from this. And after she got fired, she issued an iOS press release that says, I wasn't ready to come out about it yet, but today I got fired and I've been receiving hate mail and death threats ever since. So I'm being forced to tell the truth. I'm transgender. I transitioned at a very young age and I've lived my life as a female ever since. It's been very hard to keep the secret, but what I said about trans women is a direct reflection of my inner insecurities. And I have since come to realize that I am a woman. We all are. Mm-hmm. And then? That's the full statement. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? I actually saw this Instagram post. I don't know if she's deleted it since, but I saw it before it was. Okay. And so many people believed this. She got so many comments from people saying, I'm so proud of you. This is so beautiful. Own your truth. Be yourself. We support you. We love you. And then sprinkled in. A few real niggas saw Aaron Phillip, I think, maybe a couple of other of the girls who are out here and known and out and about. 
who were like, this bitch is straight up fucking lying to y'all. <laughs> and then another one, bitch, you know good and goddamn well you not no fucking transgender. Then another one, Carissa, girl, I cannot believe you decided to go out like this. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm like, so I found out about all this in hindsight, you know, but what, so there's a few different ways this pissed me off. First of all, you really lied about having a trans identity because you were being called out for your shit. Sis, I don't understand how you looked at the situation you were in. I'm sure you panicked because, you know, you're getting a lot of really negative attention and that's scary for anybody. But the fact that instead of, you know, Getting in your group chat with your real friends, talking to trusted people in your life, family, deleting Instagram off your phone, <laughs> meditating, <laughs> journaling, you know, even drinking or, you know, it, you had so many options and you chose to lie about your gender identity. And then so so that's enough by itself. But then the fact that you took what is some people's real story mm, mm, mm. and bastardized it because you didn't want to be in trouble no more. Mm. Sister, and that is where you really fucked up. I cannot. There are real people who have known that there was something different about them for all their lives and never had a name for it or were too ashamed to ever really own it or tried to own it and who were kicked out of their families and disowned from their lives and all this. Like, girl... Trans people have real fucking problems, sis. Our trans sisters are being murdered. It seemed like a new one two, three times a month. The suicide rates that we talked about earlier in the show, those are real. Like, and unemployment. Like, they are also earning the least out of all of us. And then it gets worse when you're a black trans woman or disabled trans woman or whatever. Like, it, it's like you experience more shit the more of these intersections you live at not that this is what it's about i'm getting back to that where you fucked up is that you took real life people and the the real pain and struggle they go to that you don't know jack shit about and put it into a fucking ios press release because you thought maybe you could get your job back modeling bras and panties <laughs> you took like you took little girl a moment that is like one of the rare moments where a trans person can get like public like support, you know what I mean? Yeah. In doing something that takes a lot of bravery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what I mean? For like 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 you like you're saying, it's like a real story and real experience for so many people that does take guts for a lot and is one of the few moments where some people may just be like, you're loved, sis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got your back. Right. And just remember, you got allies. A real here. moment that so like, many people need, need and want. Just as a way to need get to out of stay trouble. alive, girl. Like, you're not understanding the gravity of the situation. Like, that's just, that's dark. You don't understand what you're playing with, sis. That is so gross. Talking about... Uh, I I used to feel like a trans person or I definitely feel like a trans person in a way because I used to have to stuff my bra in high school and people believe <laughs> You're me. You're shitting me. I'm not shitting you. <sighs> so, so this, you, you need help, sis. You do, girl. Like, you do. So, of course, after it came out that she had been lying about being trans, it turned from a story that would maybe just be on, you know, Instagram blogs into a story that made, <clears throat> excuse me, into something that made like the actual news like it was all over the place mm -hmm. BuzzFeed contacted her and she was like uh, you gotta pay me for an interview and then they were like bitch no and so then she called them anyway <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, after all this it's came so out, stupid. she issued another press release on Instagram that said, I apologize for any transphobic remark I've ever made towards the community. I panicked and thought if I came out as trans that I could somehow make things better for myself. But it appears I've only made things worse. Yes, girl, lunch on BuzzFeed, yeah. it's definitely worse. <laughs> I'm truly sorry. I'm only 20 and I'm human. I make mistakes, but I refuse to let them define me. I hope you can all forgive me and move on from this because I'm so much more than this incident and I'm not do. a coward. Mm -hmm. I'm taking some time to reflect on my actions and I hope you all can try to understand so I think you know if you wrote this yourself it's probably as good as you could have possibly done probably. I just want you to know that people are a lot more likely to forgive you and move on if you show 
that you actually understand just how bad you fucked up. You have to show people that because you've already shown them how ignorant you can be. So I hope you really are logging off and taking some time to reflect on your actions. I hope you are because I feel like then you'll get to this place where you understand just how wrong it was for you to do this. You know, another thing that really just like slices at my brain with this one, and I'm not going to make no assumptions because I don't know this girl, but... I would not be surprised. Like, I'm willing to bet a sizable chunk of my money that this girl has been at parties, functions, runways, oh, you know and things with the girls. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure that she has clinked glasses with so many trans women, gay uh, people, bi people, gender nonconform. Like, because the fashion world. Right. You know, a lot of parties you go to, a lot of shows you go to, the girls are there because, you know, they live for us on the surface. And then we'll still go out and do and say shit like this. Blow you know, she posted mind. a picture of her with the girl who plays Jules on Euphoria talking about we've been friends. There you go. So you pulled out your trans friend, bitch. Oh, after the fact. Yes. Oh, fun. <laughs> so when you were saying it, I was thinking he doesn't even know that she literally did it. <laughs> Little girl. <laughs> oh, whew. sweetie, this was really bad. And so I hope you listen to this. I hope you run it back and listen to it a few more times. Your mouth is wide open. <laughs> it's just, I hope you really internalize what we're saying to you here. Because it's not just, oh, haha, I thought I could do this and keep my career. It's like, girl, you're you're playing about people's lives. People have real fucked up experiences that you don't know nothing about. And you turn it into like, a joke. You turn into just like, oh, well, I thought it could get me out of this. Tee hee hee. No, sis. You just gonna have to do way better than that. And okay. I feel like I was restrained as I could possibly be because, girl, this was some of the top 10 dumbest shit I have seen in my fucking life. Girl, are you fucking kidding? And I say this as somebody who was transphobic at age 20. Sis, I you can get to, to a place of non-ignorance, but you have to try. <laughs> Please, that please. Is all <laughs> I'm saying. That's really slash it. Slash asking. That's it. Like, if you can just get down to the fact that ain't nobody bothering you. Yep. Ain't nobody coming, you know, in a in a, a flaming uh, horse <laughs> horse led yep. chariot yep. to come and scoop up your kids yep. and take them away to hell. Exactly. And, like people just want to live their life. <laughs> That's literally all, girl. Oh, just you like you do. do <laughs> is listen and respect. Ooh, that's, that's really it. All it's it so takes. easy. You, it could be so easy. You niggas were because, as I hard. said at the beginning of your read, I don't even understand what you could possibly get out of making the comments that she was making originally. Not what, a damn what, thing. what, what, what does that help you? You with? had to know people were going to be like, girl, just like they knew you were lying. <laughs> like you had to know that people were going to be like, bitch, you are not transgender. Like you had to know. You had to. I okay. Well, <laughs> all right. I mean, you were born in 1999. What the hell? <laughs> I don't even know. I, anyway, all right, all right. That wraps up this week's episode of the read. This week's episode is again brought to you by a Black Lady Sketch Show, the newest comedy on HBO, starring Robin Thede, Quinta Brunson, Ashley Nicole Black, Gabrielle Dennis, executive produced by Issa Rae. A Black Lady Sketch Show is a first of its kind comedy that explores culturally relevant themes, including social norms, anxiety, religion, sex, dating, and relationships in a limitless magic reality. That's exactly what it is. It airs tonight, 11 p.m. That is August 2nd, 11 p.m. Only on HBO. You should definitely go check it out. No, seriously. Um, really you really, good. really should. Make sure you got it on your DVR. Host a watch party. Sign up for HBO. You got to watch this show, y'all. All right. Um, uh, social media is This Is The Read. Website is thisisthereed.com. Kifiri, any news from you? I do not have any news this week. I just want to say um, I had a really great time in, in Cancun. Oh, Lord. Totally felt like I was on MTV spring break in, like, the early 2000s. No, I wasn't. I just... <laughs> I like drink. So I drank more tequila though this week probably than in my entire life, mm. and I probably did some of the best twerking of my career. Oh wow! So um, I feel like I checked off all of the boxes. I think you leveled up. I wanted yeah. to, you know, swam, <laughs> napped. 
did all of the things. So Mexico, you don't owe me no change. Thank you so much for having me. And I am so sorry. Mexico, I'm so sorry that an ugly ass bitch like, <laughs> like this Donald Trump would even play games with y'all and disrespect yeah, y'all. Beautiful ass country. Donald, 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 nigga. <laughs> we went out to like some uh, like like whatever their their Times Square is. I don't know like what is it. Okay. Like all the bars and oh and nice drug people oh and whatever. shit. And there was like the cool thing about that area is there, there's so many like clubs that are completely open in the front, mm-hmm. so you can literally see the inside of the party and hear them. And so we're like walking out of some place this like great show or whatever that we went to and I heard them they're playing like hip hop music or whatever in the the club across the street and the DJ just goes everybody's yell fuck Donald Trump, fuck Donald Trump. and I was like I feel seen <laughs> Yeah, I really want oh, to like home. run up to the first Mexican person that I could find and be like, I hate him too. I hate him too. Oh my God. Like, no, no, I totally hate him. Please understand. Like, I love y'all so much. Anyways. They know. They saw your black ass and they knew. They're probably they like, don't no, even question it. They don't give a fuck about that. You and honestly, if you MAGA and partying in Cancun, you're going to get whatever you deserve. And hopefully quickly. <laughs> like, you a dumbass to like, go to their country with that shit. Get missing. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? All right, y'all. We will see y'all next week. <laughs> 